Your skin is often a reflection of your health. A lot of people don't know this, but your gut health can show up on your skin. Your immune system can show up on your skin. You can have thyroid issues, diabetes. Lots of things can show up on your skin. So your skin, although not perfect, might be an easy way to tell whether or not something is going on on the inside. So pay attention to how your skin looks. If you notice lots of changes, it might be more than just your skin. It's a direct shot at me or what? No. What, what, what does my sunburn <laughs> tell you, Sal? <so? laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I just why were you, even, why hey, were you looking at the sun I didn't sun even directly? notice that on the last <laughs> you guys part. Didn't even see that. I didn't even notice in the last part you had your bill so low, I didn't even pick up on yeah, how I red you are, bro. <laughs> Oh my god. I was in the desert. You were totally I hiding right, dude. Yes. Oh man. You look like I was like a piece of bacon. <laughs> I mean you look there. like you covered everywhere else, but you just missed your face or what? No, it's all here. <laughs> oh, it if, is. if I take my shirt you, off. You look see. like you watched a nuclear explosion go off and you were just far enough to not die. Really? Hey, how hot was it? Was it really hot there this weekend? Yeah, it was really hot. It was like a hundred <laughs> and five. Something like that. Hold on. Do you have Caldera here? Put, yeah. have you tried this on a sunburn? No. It's the best. Thing oh, oh yeah, have, the serum. Have the serum. Uh, it does for help. sunburn. Yeah, I have tried that. Put it on. It makes a big difference. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, lube lube him up, do Doug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little far away. Yeah. Otherwise, I would. You know, back to back to the skin thing. Um, you know what's what's crazy about this is that you'll often hear from doctors uh, that it isn't a, a, a health issue. They'll say, "Oh, you have a lot of acne." Oh, what about the food I'm eating, doc? Or what's going on? No, no, no it has nothing to do with. The food you're eating. Are you sure? When I eat this food, I notice I break out. Well, my dermatologist told me that for years. So they crazy. say it's just genetic uh, thing. Like, and that that's the gift you get. You they got. don't even say that. What they okay, it, it may, and Sal, you probably know better than any of us as far as like is it, if it's uh, what the studies aren't conclusive, and so they and because they have steroids and prescriptions to give you to tamp down whatever it is that's being expressed on your skin. They default that way versus going like, instead. Like there was like no when I came in with to see a dermatologist about my psoriasis the first time, well, you, every time for that matter. It, there was never a conversation around like what does your diet look like and yeah. have you ever mm -hmm. had have you had any sort of food intolerance like nothing around that whatsoever or, or do you take do you put certain products on your skin nothing like that it was purely like oh well we have this this and this for that so what's and I asked the questions by the way I know so like, how long ago was that. Oh, that was years Long ago. Long time ago, right? Yeah, yeah. So with psoriasis, they know it's an autoimmune issue, right? So they know that the immune system is attaching, attacking the yeah. skin, and um, and that's about as far as it went. And, yeah, they, and, they know it's like she said autoimmune, like she yeah. knows that. But then, and then that was what triggered me as a trainer. I go, oh, it's autoimmune. So this is probably diet related. Then, like, so what do you? What are some of the most like? Right. Sorry, and she was just like, oh, she just dismissed it. Yep, yep. And th now the reason they did that now now they might actually connect it, but the reason why they did that was because they were able. They never really connected, except for allergies, like like food allergies or something like celiac. They never connected food to, uh, you know, causing issues with the immune system, making it maybe hypervigilant. Mm -hmm. We now have data um, that shows that, so they might change their tune now. Although I'm not sure. But for things like acne, they'll still say, no, none of those things uh, have an effect. They, it, it doesn't affect. Now, that's crazy because we know acne mm -hmm. is caused or at least exacerbated or at least it plays a role in terms of the bacteria on your skin. In fact, traditional acne treatments aim to kill the bacteria on your skin. So you, you use something with like salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide. So like, uh, what's it called? Clearacel, right? Mm -hmm. That's benzoyl peroxide or the washes, salicylic acid. What do they do? They kill bacteria. That's what they do. And that's kind of how they work. So they know that the microbiome on your skin has something to do with your with acne, but they don't connect the microbiome in the gut and how that affects it. Or like so is, to me, it's crazy. Is yeah. it too much of a reach to say like that is similar to what happens <laughs> with an antibiotic when you, someone gives you an antibiotic? Like the, like you putting this cream on your face, your skin is an organ, it has its own microbiome, it goes in there and nukes. Yeah. all this stuff to clear your skin up. Isn't that the same concept of what we do? When Except we take on the it, skin. Yeah, we take an mm -hmm. antibiotic because we've got some sort of issue in our gut or whatever like that, and it just kills everything, but including the healthy yeah. microbiome, which that's the same thing that's happening on the fit, right? Is that the, is that, am I so not explaining that right? Yeah, so it'll 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 basically disinfect, to us, in essence, the skin. And now you need a healthy microbiome on your skin, just like you need it in your gut um, and anywhere else in your body. It plays a role in our health. We have a symbiotic relationship with bacteria. We need them. 
and a good microbiome on your skin or in your mouth or in your gut promotes good health. For example, if you have a good microbiome in your mouth, we know that it can prevent things like cavities. In fact, here's, a, here's something that's interesting. Mouthwash. Mouthwash kills bacteria in the mouth. Repeated use of mouthwash can actually, now they've connected it to insulin resistance because the bacteria wow. in the mouth plays a role wow. in how the body mm -hmm. or how your insulin, uh, your body reacts to insulin the when you consume process. things that cause, mm -hmm. right? So it is, um, it is interesting. We don't view it that way traditionally, but look, here's, look, I'll give you another example. We just talked about Caldera. If you go to, and you get like traditional skincare, here's what they do. They strip the skin first. So they take everything off, all the oils and everything. And then what they do is they try to replace it with synthetic alternatives to the oils on your face. Um, and does it work? It can, but again, you're, you're, you're trying to replace what, uh, what nature can do better. We talked about Caldera earlier. Caldera doesn't try to do that. Caldera actually tries to use natural oils and botanicals that support your skin's natural oils, that support <clears throat> your natural mic microbiome uh, on your skin. This is why... People like it so much. It actually works with your skin versus against it. But the skin is the largest organ in the body. And look, here, okay, here's, here's your hint right here. One of the clearest signs, okay, one of the things that will make someone not attractive to you. Remember, attractiveness is based off of fertility. Fertility is based off of health, okay, mm -hmm. on its basic level. I know it can get much more complex and people can be weird and all, whatever. But ultimately... Uh, if you if you display signs of health, you're attractive, and this has to do with your ability to procreate and all that stuff. One of the number one things that'll make someone seem not attractive is poor skin. And everybody will say that, men and women. That's because it is an outward reflection of poor health, of potential yeah. poor health. It's that strong of a signal. So, and we ignore it. We tend to ignore it, or we tend to try to patch it up with, you know, with drugs. Yeah, it's actually funny because I'll, I'll walk around public with Courtney. She's got her nursing background, and so she literally can tell me like what kind of conditions certain people have, just like looking at people's skin. And, oh, oh, really? Yeah, and so I don't know what it's called necrosis or like where it's got like the little um, oh cholesterol issues. Yeah, so stuff like that, and then also you know diabetes yes. and. and uh, you see signs of that within like folds of the skin and like behind yeah. the neck. And so, yeah, so she'll point things like that out to me all the time. And like, she can't help herself. You know, it'd be kind of like us watching somebody uh, squat or like- Or move. Like, I, yeah, move. I do that with Katrina general. with like, I see people's ankles or their shoe soles. Like I'll walk behind someone and see their gait. Same. And I'm like telling her like, oh, I bet, they have, I bet they have knee pain or <laughs> their, their hips are probably, <laughs> that guy's hips bothering him for sure. And she's like, what? Hey, gonna... I wonder if a, if a fitness expert could yeah. pretend to be like a psychic. So come on up stage. I'm I'm going to tell you all about it. Look, you have left knee pain. Of course oh it my can. God. What How are you, you talking know? about? You used to use that to oh sell God. training. What are you talking about? We all did. I When I, when I tapped into that, sure. I was like. Yeah, but you didn't act like you were psychic. No, I didn't go like, you know, hold on. You know, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Put your hand right here. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, you got uh, left pain, pain on your left lower back. Bro, if yeah. you did that, that would be hilarious. I know, right? Let's say. <laughs> Let me consult the cards real quick. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, Doug, look up hypercholestemia, I think it's called, for the skin. That's where they get like, uh, it looks like dark skin. In the, yeah, like, little tags dark skin stuff. tags. On I think the it has to do with uh, uh, like a lipid profile being off. I might be wrong. What I is? Know. I don't even know what that looks like. Okay. You ever seen someone? Usually you they're usually they're a little heavy. You almost want to like scrape it off. It like, looks like it's dirt, but it's it's dark. Oh, okay, yeah. Now that you're saying, now you're describing neck. like that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I think it has to do with blood lipids or something to do with with that. I don't know. I might be wrong. Let's see if, if Doug can figure it out. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. But, so we know it like like really. Obvious health conditions now we're connecting. Oh, is that it? Cholesterol symptoms in the skin, yeah. Yeah, well, the eyelids one is the one I think I've seen before. Like eyelids, that. And then yeah. also, I guess- I've That's seen. called uh, xanthal, uh, xanthal- Lasma. Xanthal asthma? Yeah. yeah. So there's obvious ones that doctors will notice, but like the more Ooh. common stuff that we just accept is like, oh, this is what happens to people. Um, hormone imbalance, this is a big one. Yeah, I mean, this is silly. Ask any woman, how is your skin the same throughout your whole cycle? 
a, a lot of women will say no. Oh, this is when I break out. This yeah, is yeah. when my skin, this is when my skin yeah. tends to look the best or whatever. It's mm-hmm. your hormones. Which I mean, and another example is that when you see guys that take too much testosterone, they get, they break out, they get acne. Some people do. Some people don't. How weird is that? Well, I mean, so that's the same thing as this. Some people have poor diet and it expresses itself on the skin. Some people have poor diet and it doesn't Uh express itself on the skin. So I think it's the same. Yeah. I knew a guy that like took a little bit of anabolics way back in the day, bro. He broke out in boils. Uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. He was one of my sales guys. Yeah. And it like terrible boils all over his back and chest. I was like, wow, wow, not worth that it. That is unfortunate. Yeah. I, I remember meeting people in, in, uh, competing that were like that and they were, and I'm like, why are you doing this? Like, why would you even, like, if that's your reaction to taking testosterone, like, do you really care about the fucking plastic trophy that much? Like, I know. That's wild to me that you would still push through that. It's like, so, I don't know, weird. But yeah, how bad do you want to to win something or achieve something like that, that you yeah. would. You think that the abs are going to replace like this? The well, skin. now I look good. No, you don't. No, yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah, I think you would look. You look healthier and better. You know, and probably more attractive to your original point with healthier skin, but less abs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I wonder how that would be an interesting like test. Like, show <clears throat> me a ripped person, their skin's all fucked up, or show me somebody who's like you just get a random like a uh, bunch of girls to, to evaluate, kind of like they do with the facial recognition stuff, mm. you know, whether or not it's like masculine features or more feminine features, yeah. like what they're more tend to, to Yeah, my guess towards. would be the healthy skin would be the more attractive thing. The healthy of skin would, most yeah, of us are more priority. obsessed with looking ripped than what most people even find that so attractive. It, it, I mean, evolutionarily speaking, poor skin, uh, it meant poor health, or it meant contagious disease or uh, mites or fleas or something like that, which, you know, you don't want. <laughs> you don't want that if you're in a, in a tribe. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. If you want to win it, you got to enter. Here's how. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll notify you in the comments section. We're also running a sale this month. Map Symmetry is half off and the RGB bundle is half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Did we talk about the the lady on the plane that they identified her face and, and they talked about yeah, it? We it wasn't, yeah, yeah uh, we talked about it because you brought up the, the, the picture and then we talked about because the, we... There we, was another video that came out. And people yeah, yeah. Keep, we talk, and they you, keep doing... No, you, no, they keep analyzing Oh, it. again? I think so. No, you talked about the percentage yeah. of the... Yeah, no, you talked about that already. That's so weird. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Yeah, I, I was trying to describe that actually this weekend to... it was I, We got in a really funny conversation with my brother-in-law and like I was educating them on uh this lady and like the phenomenon behind it and all that kind of stuff and lizard people and all that and <laughs> it got really sideways like we had to stop talking about because we we're at like a fine dining restaurant <laughs> I'm like, what are we talking about you guys we need to change the subject hey you know that big loch ness monster search party yeah did in you see that the, the picture that they caught well i mean it's in scotland but i know that in england they they had a bunch of people. No, I didn't. Is that what it was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did see. Yeah. Some lady actually got a. They a got picture. a photo. I don't know if Doug can look it up. They actually it's found a whale penis. It was like no. two like little hump. It definitely looked like. I mean, they're like it was swimming. It was something. There's something there. Uh, what are they gonna find? I don't know. That that one actually looked maybe it was an eel. I don't know. Oh, How? that's what they said. It could be a giant something eel. Yeah, which would also be weird. What's it doing? Well, I don't really, I didn't, I didn't really get much sense of scale with that though. Like in terms of how big it was, they like, said it was pretty big. They said it was big, but yeah. did your did your brother in law not know about the plane lady, or did he know about the plane lady? No, he didn't know about it. That, that's so. Some I mean, Jordan Syatt, we just had in the studio, right? And he first thing he saw was that he was like, "Oh my god, that picture is epic!" And they're like, <laughs> yes. I'm like some people don't know that story. I'm like, I thought that was like the, one of the most viral things that's happened this year. Isn't I'm it? actually kind of jealous. It actually shows like how much we are like we have to pay attention to nonsense yeah. on our phones all that's the time true. just to like talk about things. I know it would be uh, nice yeah. to not know. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. I was almost jealous of them. I'm like, yeah. oh, man, you guys don't even hey, know that. Hey, speaking of that, I thought that was really interesting, you know, not to hijack Jordan's tip, but I thought that was – we. Sal asked him a great question, like some of the, like, you know, what are some of the most basic foundational, like, health and fitness tips, you know, and I know Sal was searching for the, you know, the processed foods and the walk, which he, of course, said all those types of things. And one of the things he added in there was, like, avoid the news. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I thought that was a really cool, like you know, that I wouldn't have thought that as like a, a top five basic tip to somebody like that. And then he went on to talk about how right now he's measuring his blood, blood pressure. pressure. I know, 
and how there is a very clear yeah. difference yeah. in his average blood pressure level when he takes off okay. not watching. That's it. pretty alarming. I that's hell that, alarming that's when you think a, about that. I think that happens that's a great at me thing too. To test. Look, look here, this, <clears throat> it's a fact. You want to feel out of control and disempowered and stressed out? Look at problems you can't influence. Yeah. And, and keep looking at problems can't anything about it. you can't influence. That is a terrible feeling. That's like yeah. when, when this is what parents will do to their kids sometimes. They'll scare their, they'll tell them about all these problems kids have no influence or no ability to do anything with, and they wonder why their kids are so stressed out. This happens to you too. You hear about these massive, crazy problems, what's happening way across the world. Yeah. Oh my God, can't do anything about it. I'm just sitting here, disempowered, afraid. You're better off not knowing. And then if there's something that will affect you, you're probably going to find out no matter what. Think about it. If it's going to happen around here, it's going to affect you. You don't need to go looking on the news. I'm going to go walk up to Justin. Bro, did you yeah. see what happened down the street? Right. And you're going to be like, oh, well, shit. well, I mean, what is that? Like, why? I feel like uh, some people, they want to take on all of the problems from everywhere. They feel like it's it's almost like they're not as good of a human if they don't um, acknowledge all these horrible things. I think, it's, uh, I think that's justification. I think we're naturally addicted to hearing bad news because totally. it used to mean survival. Yeah. That's what it meant. Totally, because you know, you know, an example of that that would prove that that's probably not the main theory of why we do it is why do we watch uh, NASCAR? Mm. We drive around five hundred times in a circle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why you watch crash. it is for the possibility yeah. of a crash. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It's there's something that we're we're drawn to that like destruction or bad, drama, drama. Yeah. Shit, yeah, yeah. So there, it, there's it's more yeah. to it than just the virtue signaling piece of being more informed. Than I think that's the else. afterwards, right? Cause then someone confronts them about it. Like, why do you watch the news? Just turn it off. Well, I need to be informed. Yeah. yeah. Don't you want to know yeah, what's happening in the world? A bunch. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, do you though? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was listening to um, Joe Rogan interview Bill Maher. Did you listen to that one, Justin? I just started that one. Yeah. On my way over. Yeah. So they had a big conversation and they were talking about, so Bill Maher, very controversial guy. He says a lot of stuff that he actually, he used to be on a show, got kicked off because he said something, once and he's always controversial, Bill Maher, and I appreciate him because he does say what he wants, and he but he's at least consistent with he's his consistent. Points, yeah. But did you hear what he said gets him the most flack? Yeah. What, yeah. what? Uh, when he's talking about how being fat is not healthy for you? Talking about obesity. Yeah. He's like nothing gets me more hate than when I bring up obesity. Well, let's be honest. Nothing would unite people against him than that. Then no. There's more like going left or right, there's a pretty even divide of yeah. people in that. But going against obese people, you're yeah. outnumbered. Yeah. There's a way greater percentage of people that are either overweight, really mm -hmm. overweight, or obese than there are the people that that's all but what, what was he, about offending everybody. Totally. And what interests me when I was listening to it was how Rogan and him were trying to talk about the causes of obesity and how how they were so wrong. Yeah, they were wrong. Yeah, they were I looking at the too. wrong things, and obviously, uh, the longer we've done this, the more we realize what the real issues are. But they were blaming so many things, like, "Oh, it's sugar." Yeah, the sugar yeah. industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they 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 want to put out false information in the past, and oh, it's these chemicals, and oh, it's this. It's like actually, it's actually it's actually quite uh, simple. Uh, is that we eat more engineered food that makes us overeat, and we don't move as much. It's literally that simple. There's a lot of complexities to it. But that's it. But hearing them talk about all the components yeah. and not realizing like there's something in common with all this stuff. And it's uh, not that it's, you know, just sugar or just this. Do, are you guys like yelling at your, uh, I at mean, your, yeah. I was just listening. Like your, <laughs> I was like, I wish I was there. I was like, oh, I wish I was here on the show so I could kind I of I mean, like, they were concerned about the right things, but yeah, I don't, I don't think they were nailing like the their way or, they the, communicate the true, it. yeah, the true cause of it all, you know? That's well, like, like you said, I think there's such a simpler way to say it. Yes, yeah. there's nuances. Yes, there's individual variants to people that have certain conditions, but generally speaking, you know, hyper palatable foods, highly processed foods, causes people to have poor behaviors around eating Period. food. Mm -hmm. And if we had if we had less access to food and it was only whole foods, it would be so much easier yeah. to maintain. It's not like uh the same desires or wants mm -hmm. didn't exist 2 300 years ago, just you didn't have foods that caused those big behaviors. You didn't have behaviors, drug like foods. Yeah, to be to be triggered all the time. So, I mean it is really a I, lot simpler than I was what listening we, we make to it. it. 
uh, on the way home from Truckee as I was as I was eating candy, right? So <laughs> they're having this conversation. <laughs> I stopped at the gas station. <laughs> Wait a minute. At least you're yeah. honest. No, well, I, just, I stopped at the gas station, and uh, something I'll do sometimes if I feel like I want to stay awake is I'll have uh, like hard candy because I could like you know keep it in my mouth, and it kind of occupies me, keeps me awake, right? So I bought. <laughs> And don't judge me, uh, butterscotch uh, discs. So I know it's an old. Oh, you are candy. getting old, bro. So good. I've always liked them. Uh, those were those originals. I, no, man. that's not butterscotch, bro. Is it? No, it's but, just it's like, it's, butterscotch it's is like, like chewy. Like, oh yeah, that's like chewy caramel. It's the, no, no, it's the, the yellow, hard it's one. The yellow wrapper. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. the yellow wrapper. Oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. They're literally old people. I, like I mean, it's right there. It, okay, were, you don't like them? The, no, I like them. Okay, yeah, yeah, they're, they're the best. Dude, I went all around Scotland looking for this one liqueur that was butterscotch. It was like a whiskey butterscotch liqueur. It was so good. Oh. Dude, I went everywhere. I finally found a little bit and was supposed to like ship it back, but I ended up drinking yeah. it all there. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> Whoops. You talk about, hey, <laughs> I got a whole lot of control Fresh over here. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I bought, I'm, I'm listening to them talk and they're talking about what they think is a problem, whatever. And I'm eating these candies, right? And I'm, I'm kind of like to myself, I'm like, God, I wish I was there. And then I look at this candy and I'm looking at it, I'm like, it's so funny to me how I look at this and I'm like, this is what we can consume. And you look at the ingredients and it's literally an invented, it's an invented, you know, innovative, uh, you know, just ingredients they mix together to create this hyper palatable thing that didn't ever exist. And you look at the ingredients, half of them are ingredients to make it more palatable and they're not food ingredients. They're ingredients that are quote unquote Texture, edible. Yeah. Well, well, they're, they're quote unquote edible, meaning they've been tested that they don't make you die. Right. But they do things like give it the like right xylitol gum and all these whatever. Things. Right. Like, like yellow number seven and you know, right. they're done to make it look a particular way or to feel a particular way. They're not really foods, but they're, they don't kill you. So they, they add it to make it more palatable. Yeah. And as I'm eating, it's like so funny. You know, if you took someone from a thousand years ago, they'd be like, where did you find this tree? Where does this grow? What is this incredible? It's like a treasure. Yeah, yeah. dude. You know, it's interesting. But yeah, people get it so wrong. It's uh... Anyway, speaking of, of packaged foods, this is actually sad. Have you guys heard of the one chip challenge? Have you heard of this, this chip? Is it like a TikTok thing? No. Oh, well, it is, but it's a company. Doug, look up one chip. What, you can't challenge. eat just one chip. Is that the no. whole thing? That's Lay's. That was Lay's. Yeah, that, that was yeah. always Lay's yeah, marketing. I've heard that yeah. before. Yeah. No. You guys have seen this. I know you have. It's a company that you'll buy one single tortilla chip, but it's so spicy. Oh, I think I have seen this. Actually. And I think they use like, what's it, Carolina Grim Reaper? Yes, or those like, like crossbred, like crazy peppers that are just. Yes, yes. I don't know if you found it, Doug. Make your eyes bleed. Maybe pull it up there. So apparently it's like so spicy that it's dangerous. Yeah. Look, look at the title. Like a ghost reaper look, or whatever. Look, look, look at these, look at these Team articles. Team dies after taking part in the viral no. one. Yeah. What? Died? So. Whoa, several, all those are dies. It's the same one. Oh, it's the same one. I was yeah, like, yeah, damn. Yeah. So he ate the chip. So I've seen lots of videos, by the way, with, no this, way. with this chip where people eat it. Yeah. And then the, the idea is you eat it and then you're not allowed to drink water or milk or anything for, I don't remember how much time to see if you can withstand it. And you watch the videos and they're, they're funny. But also, like you see, like this is spicy. Like people are like, ah, oh, they're like throwing up. Oh, I can't handle it. It's like oh, so man. spicy. It's dangerous, right? Apparently, he ate the chip <laughs> at school, made it through, came home, and then he went to play basketball, collapsed, and died. And the parent now they're suing the company, saying that they think the chip played a role what? in his death. Okay, so what? Uh, it might not be related. What? What know, is the, the behavioral psychology of that? Like, why? Why do things like this go viral? And like, why? It's this. Just horrible like chip. No one. It doesn't. It can't taste good. It's like, like your NASCAR analogy, right? No. They, like, like, they look at it as like a potential uh, harm. Like it's like this, is, dude. Yeah, but you're you're okay. There, that's different because it's not like you go run down and get in the NASCAR yourself and go like I'm going to try and race with these guys. Oh, these yeah. people are like they see this, they go I'm going to do this. Y yeah. So what it's makes like, like what it's, you can handle? It's like the Tide Pod. Like the Tide. Yeah. It's the same. That's it's the same as the Tide Pod thing. Like what made you go? And go like well, the Tide Pod is a whole nother level. But let's why? Take, no, that's like the same thing. No, with chip, it's actually supposed to eat it. Tide Pod, you're not supposed to eat. Okay. <laughs> you're it's not supposed like to. Who's tough enough to handle it? You are not supposed to eat a chip with engineered peppers that are so fucking hot it burns your mouth or gives well, your heart rate. You so that's not. Imagine it is if, like that. Imagine if the four of us were 24 years old. Okay. And we all went to hang out together, and I bust out 
four of these one chips. Dude, it's like you can't tell me is popular. You can't tell me you guys wouldn't be like, all right, let's do this. Let's no, see fuck like, off. I'm you sorry. wouldn't do it. No way. I might. You know, nah. Katrina and I were just talking about this the other day about how she's like, you're twenty something. My son, I can see it in my son already. My son has this this trait of me. Like, if I don't want to do something, if I'm not into it, like there ain't. No, I'm not. So you'd be, you'd be too scared, is what you're saying? And you know, and people would say that. <laughs> you know, I say I'll do something else that's more dangerous that I'm into. Like that. I'm, that it's not. Oh, a, so this is specifically about a spiciness, but you'll do something else too. No, it's not that. It's just that I won't be. I wouldn't be influenced by like other people doing a challenge. If I want to do a challenge, because I want to do the challenge. There's no way okay, that so you would you roll brought, up with. with so the, if you brought the chips, then we would do it. Well, I mean, that's you guys might be influenced that way, and I can, I, and I'm a pretty good closer, so probably could, I probably could get you guys to Shut do that. Up. You know so you saying? never did nothing stupid. Well, in your what, bro. You're so okay. funny how you take you take something and then you switch it and put words in my mouth. I didn't say I've never done anything stupid. I've done plenty of things stupid, okay. but I'm not. I've never been influenced. Listen, dude. I right, forget me influencing. What yeah. I'm saying is, you wouldn't be. You're, you're not into it. You're you not gonna do it. You, yeah. You, you, this wouldn't be something that teenage you would be like. Oh, this could be funny or whatever. You yeah. wouldn't. You wouldn't. I mean, I, I would watch it. I would. I, would, I mean, okay. In my school, I don't know. If it, I, was a, it was it was a ghost pepper, right? Is the orange one? What's yeah, the orange yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like the hottest thing around. And there was a thing where kids were yeah. were were like trying to. They were all betting each other, and they were biting it. And like, I mean, I definitely didn't partake in it. I watched all the idiots. Yeah. yeah. But I had no desire to do that. Well, I was kind of like on the influence the 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 guy that we knew we could get to do stupid shit to do the stupid shit. <laughs> Bullying, like, basically. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We get we get a dude. We, to we already we already know that yeah. about you. Yeah. That's been consistent yeah. with all the other yeah. stories. Yeah. We we <laughs> take this guy took an airsoft gun, right? And we we convinced him to basically like take his nut out and shoot <laughs> himself point blank in the nut. <laughs> okay. Oh, Adam, your question was, yeah, who would it do this way? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it was crazy. Would you rather eat a chip or shoot yourself in the ball? With <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. You never get me to do any of those things, dude. None of those. I know. So I, I guess maybe that's why I have such a hard time with it is because I can't, I can't make the connection. It's just, it's just, you know, it's like, you know, what's gonna happen? I, I this is sad. Do you think they're gonna sell them more or less chips now that someone died? More. I know. More. I know. They sell a ton more. Mm. It's crazy. What's the spiciest? Have you guys ever eaten something so spicy? I've had pepper. I've had some of those hot, not the ghost pepper, but I've had pepper. Have you ever so. feared for your, like you eat something so spicy? You're like, am I gonna? It's just this is dangerous. <sighs> no, but I mean it's been so spicy where you get like the hiccups and you have like yeah. and you're like you're literally physically sweating like instantly. Yeah, I mean I yeah I think that's why it pulled me back. I didn't go that crazy with it. It's just enough to where like I I felt like it was hard for me to breathe, and so I was like, okay, I'm not doing that again because like, there's levels. I went to an Indian restaurant with my friend who's Indian and he said, do you like spicy food? And like an idiot, I said, yes. I said, do you like spicy food? But I didn't know that there's a different level of spicy. Yeah, yeah. Well, Indian I spicy. I grew, I grew up in San Jose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, whatever. He goes in the back and I go with him because he knows the staff back. There's this little Indian restaurant, little hole in the wall. And he's speaking to them or whatever. And they're yeah. laughing at him and they're like, no, 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 no. And he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And they got this big old thing. And then finally they said, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and we walk out. I'm like, what did you tell them? He says, I told them to make this the spiciest chick, you know, I don't remember what we ate, spiciest dish they've ever made. They said, no. He said, yes, I want it that way. And they said, okay. So I'm like, huh, what are we going to experience here? Okay. <laughs> I, listen, this is, a true, hey, this is a true story. I took a bite and I swore to God, it, uh, five to 10 minutes later, I had to run out to my car. Thankfully, I had an inhaler out there. I had an asthma inhaler and I had to hit the inhaler and stay outside. That's so and it weird. took me like 30 minutes to settle down. Oh my God. He ate the whole freaking dish. Oh my God. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, so yeah. do you think this actually caused that this kid or are they just trying to make a connection to make money? I think they might be trying to make a connection because well, it happened later. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, like he went he went to school, then he went home and then he played basketball. There that's was like some that's time. That's what the article said. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I don't, I don't well, think yeah. it's connected. Have you guys tried uh, Andrew's spicy, whatever the hell that is in the back there? Yeah, no, it's too spicy. For me. <laughs> yeah. He's too Mexican for me. I'm, like, that's, I'm only quarter Mexican. You don't have that much Mexican <laughs> yeah, I'm to pull that off. I'm, I'm quarter. It feels it. Yeah, yeah, no, shit, dude. Smelling it would destroy yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. Anyway, yeah. uh, it messes up my gut too much, which is why I don't do it. Although I like the, the taste. Speaking of gut, Adam, what happened with Derek? I want to hear about this. Oh, bro. Did, you hear, did, just, did he no, tell you what happened tell, with Derek? No, he didn't tell, didn't tell me because we're kind of like uh, you guys are uh, off the dairy. Cool, well, we've been dairy bros. We've been quiet on on because we haven't officially. Do you know when when are we going to drop that episode? It's not going to drop for a while, so oh we God. might as well talk about <laughs> we're it. We're going to piss people off like crazy. Yeah, um, so much for the reveal. I mean, can't we drop it sooner, or do we have to wait? Are we supposed to schedule to do it way later? Yeah, we're scheduled to do it. Uh, towards maybe, I'll, maybe I'll see if I can November and get it sooner for the audience so they can hear it. But anyways, uh, you know, it came back that I, we had an intolerance to or intoler, uh, food intolerance to um, dairy. So I've now I'm on like two weeks of not having it. I feel and, like it's karma, by the way. But anyway. 
And first of all, I think I shared earlier that I was really surprised on how many foods that I had that had dairy in it. I just, you, you know, you brought up one the other day that I remember talking to Trina. She's like, what? That has, that has, what was the one? Yeah, you certain salamis. Yeah, salami. Some salamis. Yeah, she's right like, now. salami. And she's like, I Sal said that. And then I checked and she goes, it, it was right. There was a salami and it had dairy. In. So there's a lot of little things that yeah. you just, you wouldn't even think have dairy. And especially if you go out and you eat at a restaurant and there's any sort of a sauce you anywhere. You have to tell them. Yeah, you have yeah. to. And so, I mean, I feel, I feel I'm so annoyed, right? That I have to be like Sal now at the restaurant because I've been making fun of him for so many years, right? <laughs> He's still talking shit. I do. I still talk <laughs> shit while I do it, right? I was like, <laughs> I, I, I apologize. That's why like, I'm so sorry that I have to be like this, but does this have have dairy you know so yeah. anyways um i've been good it's been like two weeks or whatever so we're out in park city uh katrina and i and uh we, we were eating out like basically every meal and i ordered something that i think i just assumed it didn't have dairy and it did and right away i had like an issue and then like a total idiot i was just like well i, I you know i broke the seal so i may as well whatever the next meal no. i allowed you know yeah, and it wasn't a, by, by the way it wasn't like i didn't go have a brick of cheese or have a glass of milk or have I ice cream it was just yeah. like i what i did was i just ordered twice out and didn't and something you would normally order that's right yeah, yeah calamari with some dipping sauce yeah, and then yeah. it was i forget what the other one was and so it wasn't like i was like going ham on dairy but just that little bit because i had taken two weeks off and let my system probably completely clear out holy shit it fucked me up for the next 48 hours dude yeah. i was so miserable and i was so angry that that it, I, <laughs> I was more angry that i stopped taking it before i was like man i was better when i was taking it which <laughs> helped me make that connection that i know this happens to people yeah like I know that somebody goes, oh, I, you know, I, I heard the Wormheimer effect or what, what's that called? No, Herxheimer. No, Herxheimer. that's not what it was. Yeah, that, that's a that's a die up. Okay, so this is interesting, and I'd love to ask. I wish I asked Dr. Cabral, and maybe I'll email him or something to get the answer to this. That's common. You'll avoid a food that you have an intolerance to, and then you'll reintroduce, reintroduce it at some point, and it maybe it's not long enough that you waited long enough, and long enough, excuse me, and then you'll get. A stronger like reaction. A violent reaction. Yes. Yeah, yeah this was, that was, okay. I could eat a, a, a fucking cart of ice cream and not got the reaction I got from a dipping sauce. Yeah. So that's freaking, that's what pissed me off so yeah. much. It's like, I had never felt like that from, and I've, I've mentioned on the podcast in the past that, oh, you know, I, if I would have ice cream and then also a whey shake, it would, my stool would be a little off. Yeah. And I would, and I, I had made that connection. And when I think back now, I'm like, boy, I was probably actually having a couple times in the day besides that that I wasn't even paying attention to. And here I am, you know, abstaining from it for two weeks, nothing, making sure everything is, nothing has dairy in it. And then I have a dipping sauce with it and I am just tore so, up. So here's my guess. And I don't know. I have to talk to Dr. Cabral. But when we talk about actual allergies, not intolerances, <clears throat> um, one of the strategies to, and they're doing this a lot with children now, one of the strategies to reduce uh, someone's risk of like anaphylactic shock is slow, repeated, <clears throat> small, very small exposures to the, uh, the the substance in question. And it over time, the immune reaction actually starts to dampen. So like with peanut allergies, they have this, this new thing where it's a patch and you keep reapplying the patch and each time it adds a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more and then the eventual treatment is, and this is my nephew, he has to eat a teaspoon of peanut butter every day in order to maintain this, you know, not getting this crazy. Oh, wow, because it could reverse. <clears throat> it could reverse. Oh, wow. So I, I, I wonder what the hell is going on with intolerances if avoiding the food initially causes this stronger reaction. And then, it, because eventually what will happen with intolerances, that won't happen. Eventually what will happen is the antibodies that they identified will start to tamper down. You'll mm -hmm. heal your gut, whatever the hell the problem is. Then typically what happens is you can reintroduce the food. This doesn't always happen, but usually then the food doesn't bother you anymore. Yeah. So I don't know what happens though with that. In well, the, it'd be in the interesting middle. because I remember mm -hmm. he was very specific to 21 days too. I heard him say 21 days ago. And so I was you have like, to start oh. over. You know that, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah no, I know. Of course it counts over, especially since I said F it and I started to allow things in <laughs> Damn, there. Damn, that sucks. And, and literally, this is what an asshole I am. Okay. I said F it. I let that one, another one. And then I'm like, I'm already tore up. So I'm like, oh, whatever. If the next meal is just like, I just fucking ruined myself for oh. like the th last three days. So I'm just like, dude, this is miserable. So yeah, I'm, I was like, super annoyed by that and uh, but at the same time for me it made me hyper aware like okay 
obviously I have some sort of a, a reaction mm -hmm. to that or else I wouldn't so have felt that. So that ex Nosa. exact thing happened to me. So dairy, I still can't eat no matter what. <clears throat> and, and sometimes you just can't, right? But gluten, that happened to me. I avoided mm -hmm. gluten. And then I would have just the smallest amount of a breadcrumb or something on my food or whatever. And I'd have this really terrible reaction. Yeah. But eventually, like now, I can eat gluten now. And if I eat it too often, then it'll start to bother me. But if I have it a few times, I don't have any issues. So I'm That's actually happen. happened to me because I was trying to be good about the dairy stuff, but then I had uh, some sourdough. And I'm like, usually sourdough, I'm like, I can get away with this, you know, because yeah. it's it's one of those where because of the way it's prepared and the it's fermented, uh, fermented, yeah. it's it's the like a little bit easier. easier. To but <laughs> I don't. I think some of, there's degrees of the sourdough. I think in like in terms of like some being Correct. processed and some Correct. not quite as processed. So this was a very processed one, and and it just I had the same kind of bout where I was like, oh no, like it was immediate. It was fierce. It was like burn just all the way up to my oh. throat. Like it, immediate response. I'm like ah yeah. I was trying to be good, you know, <laughs> and then just that one thing. So here's something you guys can try. I, again, this is not approved by Dr. Cabral. This is uh, this is me with my own observation. Uh, activated charcoal, uh, it binds to things that you consume and it makes them inert, right? Charcoal is like a, they'll give it to you if you oh, have poison. Oh, it with it, huh? I'm wondering Interesting. if, yeah, because that'll it'll help me with certain foods. Well, would it, it, I would think it would have helped if I would have just taken a digestive enzyme with it too, wouldn't it, or no? Depends, uh, maybe, maybe, but I I would go charcoal next time and see if it helps. Because I think I've seen you. Don't you take the mass enzymes when you go to eat dairy and stuff like that? Not that... dairy. I still don't eat dairy. Oh, it's no, not. No, no, no. Well, I mean, I see you test like yeah. It'll things. it'll help with gluten a little bit. Dairy, nothing can help me. I could fuck. Oh, that. really? Like yeah. that, huh? Dairy, yeah. Don't no matter what, oh, man. will mess me up. I you know, know what was bad about too was that. I, what I'm realizing, because there's so many things that I used to like that have dairy in it as like my snack, like the magic spoon or things like that. And I'm like, fuck, man, candy? I got to go back to sugar? Like, it took, me so, <laughs> it took me so long to get rid of that addiction. So I bought candy, bro. I'm no, like, you did Yes, I did. Yeah, I'm like, I can eat this, right can't be, this can't be better. <laughs> this can't be a better choice. I'm not I'm doing this. So, so my stool's not bad, but now I'm eating sugar again? I'm like, this is not... I gotta hey, figure this is out. when I feel like the podcast is really like like our age is like showing through. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think you say authentic. That's no, what like what we're talking about. Like I'm just imagining my 20 year old self listening to us right now. I don't know. Okay, you say that, but it's going to sneak up to it, him. It, it, no, no it's my, it, it, hey, it's now. common. So yes, uh, uh, like my experience today, bro. Yeah, this is Watch way this. way more common in younger people than it was. Watch this, Doug. Google, I think you're right. Google uh, hot girls and gut issues. Okay, <laughs> what? this is it. <laughs> What? Bro, what are you Googling? What? Relax. What are you Everybody Googling? calm down. It's not a website. This is a hashtag. And it's a thing on social media someone sent me. Okay. That they're, that they're trying to say like, well, hot girls always have gut issues or we always have gut issues. And it was like this trending hashtag that was going around. And it was kids saying How that you they never have, brought this up. Yeah. So do you think it that it's gotten worse or it's just now we know like- I think both. How to, how I, think, to like, I think both. Look, look I diagnose it. How social media has made gut health less taboo. Hot girls have stomach problems. And it says, from bloating to bowel movements, people are becoming more outspoken and unapologetic about their gut health <clears throat> and stomach issues online. It was so, like a trending So thing. answering your question, Justin, I think it's both. Yeah. I think that there is more awareness around it and we're communicating. Because I, I also think that the, there were some of these things that in my 20s that I just wasn't paying attention to. Mm hmm you know, I think I think when you're 20 years old, you just think you know that you have an off stool, and you think you just dismiss yeah. it. Where now I'm like I'm so hyper aware. Yeah. Anytime my stool is slightly off, I'm analyzing. Where I yeah. never did that in yeah. my 20s. Where, well, so the, that's the, the culture back. It's so funny to me because I was watching like old school like stand up comedy, and you know th there was always like jabs at people that were like gluten, intolerant, intolerant, yeah. or like, and they're like, you don't have you don't have celiac, you know, you just need to shut the fuck up, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like that was like the whole like. Uh, thought process out there is like no. if you, if you there, if it's not killing you. There are more gut issues today than ever, and it's a fact. If people don't believe it, it's not just awareness. Look at food allergies alone. <clears throat> that's an immune issue. Yeah, that's a great example of it. Like, I mean, just Exploded. 50, 15 years ago, no kid was allergic Exploded. to peanuts. Now every school is peanut free because there's always a, a yeah. good percentage. Maybe, of kids. Doug, look at a chart. See if you can find a chart on. And these are kids that are going allergies. into like straight, like crazy yeah, shock, EpiPen shit. Like, bro, it's not, it's not like an allergy where, oh, he has oh, a, yeah, no, a little rash. I like, did you know any kids with food allergies? No. I didn't know any of them. No, no it's. It's gotten worse. 100% it's gotten worse, worse. And we've been aware. So then Maybe I think, one kid. which I think that's what's caused it to be so overwhelming is that 
the combination of it getting worse with more awareness around it just makes it seem like, oh my God, everybody has it now. You know? We are yeah. exposed to way more chemicals that have effects on the body. Yeah. People are just less physically help healthy anyway. Uh, we also are all exposed to glyphosate. By the way, you can now take a test. I think Dr. Cabral has this. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You could take a test to, it, it's a urine test, and they will let you know how much glyphosate residue you have in your urine. Okay, they find this in pregnant women's milk, breast milk. Glyphosates have deleterious effects on the gut wall and your microbiome, and it's fucking everywhere. And here's what's sad. Mm -hmm. You could eat all organic, and oftentimes you'll still have glyphosate residue because that shit is everywhere. What does that say now? What does that say there, Doug? So one in 10 adults, one in 13 children have food allergies, but here is the interesting thing. 377% claim... Uh, I can't. In anaphylactic food reactions increase 377 <laughs> How does it say 377 between 2007 and 2016. Yeah, but how, how no, 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 hold wait, on. Wait. Everybody calm down. Listen, from 2007 to 2016, that is not that long. That's nine years. 377% yeah. increase. One out of thirteen children. Yeah, but that's what people yeah, like, like think, out of. Yeah, but that's what people out of think, a thousand percent. Think, like, yeah, th yeah. I know. No, this is food. This is food. I'm just like, how's it gonna be more than a hundred percent? People think that. <laughs> no, no. What are you talking about? A like, whole would be a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Oh my god, you guys, you guys are so. You're gonna Anaphylactic so food. No, reactions. I know what it means. Yeah, I know. It's not severe. And if the number was five, and now the number is increased by three hundred seventy-seven percent, you'd multiply it. It just irritates me how they do that. But anyway, that's a funny way to present it. But that's crazy for dramatic. In that short period of time, and that short. By the way, anaphylactic. Anaphylactic shock is not like I think I have like this is something doctors. Oh yeah, no, you have to you have to have a pin around. Bro, that is a massive. Yeah, increase this is also the wrong one. We're looking, you're looking at food allergies. I want well, to look, like because you could be intolerant to something and not have an allergy. No, 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 you're right. But yeah. I'm saying food allergies because there's a correlate. There's a connection there. It's they're, they're they're immune reactions, right? That's why when they test your food sensitivities, they tested antibodies. I know, but that's yeah. I mean that's a that's a crazier. Number. That's scary. I mean, that's a crazier situation. Like it's if scary. you just, if you just have an intolerance, that's more likely and a lesser issue, dude. So I would think there's a much higher increase yes. on intolerances than there would be in food allergies. I agree. Go go to restaurants now. How many restaurants now have gluten free option? Yeah, 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 this kind of option or whatever. It's crazy. Well, I mean, yeah, but then that can go back to your free market um, argument of just market demand because everybody thinks that they have an issue, which goes back to Justin's comedian point of like now everybody thinks they have an intolerance yeah. to no, it. No, no, there's other data you could find that it's definitely going up. There's something going. I on. mean, I, 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 what I can do is share my experience. That's for damn yeah. sure. I know, I know for sure what I did oh, it's think. a real thing it, when you actually like take the time out to kind of parse out which foods are making you act a certain way it's like it's pretty damn obvious well you know what was very alarming for me through this what just happened to me is like you know there's a part of me that uh wants to be ignorant to it mm. yeah so I mean, know, that's a lot that's, of people like that and that's admitting to it right yeah. like it's like man I, that was a way worse situation than all the dairy I was eating just six months ago. I'd rather go back to that guy who was, mm. you know, blissfully ignorant to it and just, oh, blame it on something else or oh, I don't have it, like, ignore it's it. It's like that scene from The Matrix when the dude makes a deal with the machines, remember? Yeah. It's like, I know the steak isn't real. But, yeah, it isn't oh. real, but oh, it's easy. Yeah, no, totally like that. There's a part of that. You so know what you, you, you went got, through? You went through the whole client journey. Did you know that? <laughs> you, you did. You were told, don't eat this. So you didn't. Yeah. Then you finally introduced it. Then you broke the seal and went way over what you normally would do. Yeah. You did the on the wagon, off the wagon, and then you replaced it with candy. You're talking about candy. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah. That's oh, why I wanted, still... to I wanted to share it because I like, yeah. and I, I'm obviously hyper aware, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is what I do for a living. So, yeah. and how, how challenging both mentally for, for me, the physical discipline side of it, like, yeah, no, I could totally see where a client is going to deny it. And then even when they they accept it, then they're and then they're gonna go to an alternative. The alternative isn't a better that much. It's like just a lesser evil. It's like, <laughs> well, I mean, speaking of crazy like uh, stuff that uh, in, in today's world, like you would see a news title. I don't think I'd ever seen this news title uh, back in the day. There was a, a shooting in uh, um, uh, White Sox Stadium, uh, and this all happened because a lady had hidden smuggled a. a gun inside but you know where how she smuggled it in her fanny pack no tell me underneath her gut what? oh like, her foot underneath her gut and it it, it it fired off accidentally it shot her shot her grazed her leg and then hit her friend right next to her what oh wow how like 
What? Did they? Did, okay. So did you they lift fu- your belly, tuck you lift it in, belly, drop yeah, it, tuck it in. Gun sticks. Gun stuck. Wow. Undetected. Wow. Yeah. You know what set it off was the Cheeto. There was a Cheeto. Stupid. <laughs> that was Stupid. the trade. Hit the- that, that is weird. Isn't that weird? Did like, they what? find out why she was smuggling a gun in her under? No. I. Yeah. No. I don't know. I mean, it's again like Chicago has been kind of like. <laughs> I just went to insult all, the edges all that. Dude, line. I'm sorry. I lived there. Dude, it's gotten it's gotten bad. Well, it's Chicago, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you imagine she meets some guy at the game. They go back to his place, takes off for you know. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what her plans were, hey, but that's like a, I, it's like a naked isn't that a naked gun episode? Herself. Isn't that a naked gun episode where he's like he pull he's he pull ends up pulling like like forty guns out of nowhere, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I feel like that's what that's from. She's that the is, weirdest type. I was like, what? Like I didn't know how to wrap my just, brain around. You just it. reminded me of a terrible story. I had a, I used to work with with a woman who used to work with the severely, severely obese, like the kind of people who are bedridden and that they have to go to their house to help them and that kind of stuff. Like on my 600 pound life. Yeah. She said that one, this one man had this, there was just like festering skin issue. They couldn't figure out what it was. There was, there was food like stuck oh, in one of his, bro, yeah. And they never found it. And they had to like, Bro, come on. Change the subject. No, change the subject, dog. Uh, that's 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 not as bad as some reason uh, that's even worse. Uh, that <laughs> is worse, bro. A, a gun is like you intentionally place that there, like a it's piece a of pepperoni holster. pizza. Yeah. That you, like, I know there was 12 slices in here. Man, I was like, where, where did that 12 slice go? I don't know where it went. <laughs> oh, nah, forget about it. Yeah. 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 That's disgusting. Yeah. Hey, okay. So you were, you were in, uh, over in um, Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Yeah. Uh, just your, just your, the boys and, yeah, and, uh, and Courtney, Courtney and then her uh, brother's family. They, that was the first time they were there with us. Oh, so. did they rent yeah. another place there? Yeah. So there, yeah. So it was cool. Cause it's kind of a little community. We we knew one of the owners that uh, wasn't there, and they allowed us uh, for for them to stay at their place. And so, yeah, so we just we hung out and, and did a lot of pool time, and it was really hot. We actually went to this air museum, which was cool in Palm I Springs. Saw that. Uh, which we all, I don't know. There's something about that, like old military World War II stuff. Like my kids are really into it. And uh, it, it, it's fun. But yeah, we just, I mean, we didn't do anything crazy. It was pretty fun and yeah, chill. That's a good time. And I, was, I was up at the Truckee. Who all went with you? So it was, uh, it was my, I took three of my kids um, and uh, of course the wife and then my cousin, his wife and their two girls, which I, I love them. They're my favorite people. We had a great time. We had a great time with the kids. Um, we all got to connect. My, my cousin and his wife got to work out in our PRX gym in the garage. They were commenting on how great the gym was. was like, uh, oh, this is really cool and it folds out and. Um, so they were talking about maybe getting, you know, getting set up in their garage. Cause my cousin's like, I don't like to put anything in the garage. I want to park everything in, in the garage. That's how I am. Yeah. yeah. That's what I love about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so once he saw it and felt how sturdy it was, he's like, this is great. I'm like, bro, put this, this is like the best home gym equipment. Anyway, we had a great time. We had a totally great time up there, but here's what's funny. Did I ever tell you guys a story about how I got chased by a bear when I was a kid with my cousin? I told you guys that, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Old story. I must've told on a past episode. Anyway, long story short, we were kids camping. My cousin and I were probably 12. Playing in the woods. We saw a bear. We ran. Bears chased whatever runs. Chased us for a second. Traumatized both of us. So till this day. <laughs> you see a bear, you freak out. D- well, you guys know how I am about yeah. I'll talk about bear. It's bear season up there right now. I know. Uh, <laughs> so him and I are both They're like, hungry. we know this and we laugh about it. Like bears are a thing for us, right? Well, anyway, he shows up and he's unpacking or whatever. And uh, he brought a gun. <laughs> he brought a gun? Yeah. I'm like, why do you, why'd you bring your, so why'd you bring your, your Beretta? Well, you know those bears up here. I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you got your gun because there's bears up here. <laughs> so we went out to the. the They're the, not grizzly. Hey, we went out to the jacuzzi. You know, yeah, yeah. We're at night out the jacuzzi, yeah. brings his gun, puts it on the side. No, he I'm did. Like, yeah, he did. It's sort of got like me too, bro. He definitely traumatized. I know. Us, uh, 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 I just, I was like wishing a bear would come because that'd be awesome. You know, uh, pulls it out. Uh, <laughs> bang, bang, bang. You know? Wow, That's I know. Funny. But anyway, we had a, we had He's a great prepared. time. Did you guys just hang around the house, or did you guys go anywhere? Mostly around the house. We went out to dinner. Once um, over at uh, what's that place called Bar of America? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had a good Love time over place. there, but it was fun, man. It was it was good weather. Uh, not really. I mean, it's kind of cloudy, but it was it was good for the family. Oh, did man. you guys get rain? We got like dumped on. We like, got so rain. you know the whole. God, you had weird weather. Super hot. Super dumped hot. On? Super like, and, and the the rain was warm too. So it was like, oh, I enjoyed it because it was like a nice break. For did me. you hear? Did you see what happened up in uh, uh, Burning Man? Yes. So that's I mean, Indio Valley is like way further. You yeah. know, that direction. So, so, so my, my kid was talking about how friends of his were going to go to Burning Man. And he's like, but I don't think I'm going to go. Thank God. It rained so much over there. People got trapped. 
So they wouldn't let anybody the live. Out. You, you couldn't leave. You couldn't oh, leave. Oh, that's right. I read uh, Matt Vincent's post. And I was like, oh, wow, that didn't sound like a very fun. User. Yeah, and he was talking about what a like chat. Like, of course, he was talking about the positive things. Like, it was, yeah. you know, and he was, I was like reading it. And I'm like, this Dr- does not sound make like you a- happy no matter what. Yeah, it? I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm reading it. I'm like, this you can does do not sound like something I want to do at all right now. No, they were trapped. Uh, the porta potties couldn't get changed. Then there Took was this hours rumor. to get in and out, I heard. Then there was a rumor that Ebola was, did you hear about this? No. <laughs> Doug, Google Burning Man Ebola. There was like rumors that like uh, people are coughing up coagulated blood, stay inside your tents, whatever. What? I didn't see anything. Turned like out that. to be turned out to be false, I oh, think. Wow. But like that Ebola was spreading. Oh in, my god. Know, of oh course, my god. Of dude. course all the conspiracy theories are like <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, after it's some, happening. After some acid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god. Yeah, can you, you imagine? imagine? People are turning into zombies. Spitting water in their mouth and you think it's something else yeah. completely. Oh. Like, Burning man oh. flooding triggers false claims of Ebola. Look at that. No, it's not. Wow. That's hey. actually early, three hours ago. That's yeah. funny. What a what hey, what a terrible trip. <laughs> You're all yeah, right. F- tripping out. Hey, man, there's a bully here. Oh. You know, every time I hear someone say like a positive about it, then I hear stories like this. And I'm like, I just I don't want to go now. I like I go back and forth. I want to go, then I don't want to go. I'm like, this makes me again not want to go. I'm sure know. it's a spectacle. I know. I heard Doug kind of <laughs> describing because you went like twice, right? Doug went I did. Twice. He yeah. went before it was this crazy though, right? Is it way crazier now? Or- yeah, I think it's cr- crazier now. When I went there, there's maybe around thirty thousand people there. I think it's up to over fifty thousand. Now, now, did you did oh, you wear so crazy. anything crazy? Did you wear? Like I didn't dress up. Or, in a, like a metal so the first time or? I went, I was just there as a pure observer, and then I got sick, and so I basically laid around for most of the time. It was mm. kind of a, a real waste. The second time I went, I I did bring some stuff, but nothing crazy. Um, like and what? I enjoyed it. Like what? What do you mean? Would you wear? Just like a costumes, you know? Like I don't remember what. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> have any like you know <laughs> leather. No, I want to know what he wore, dude. <laughs> no, I, it wasn't anything bring crazy. Bring the pictures like out, that. bro. Get the uh, editing team the pictures. I want yeah. chain mail and no, no, what did you wear? What kind of what do you yeah. mean by costume? What'd you wear? I'm trying to picture. Like a, I'm like trying to remember, like a yeah, like a what? Indiana Jones costume or something like oh, that. Okay. Yeah, nothing like that. I, I was not into the leather, yeah. even though there were some people there. <laughs> and then there's of course people there that are into the costume where you don't wear anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's but it is I, as I was describing it, I I this is my description of Burning Man. It's uh it's Mad Max meets Cirque du Soleil meets Dr. Seuss. Mm. That's a good analogy. I think, yeah. Or... I mean, you see people on stilts, you see people doing acrobatics, you know, spinning fire. There's a Thunderdome there. Or there used to be anyway. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. And the, the art installations are absolutely amazing. Pretty yeah. Cool. The art, the art yeah. is what makes me want to go. Speaking of that. Okay. I went to, I was in park city, right. Or the Utah place. And uh, <clears throat> spent every day pretty much down on the strip at Park City, which absolutely love that place and have, have continued to fall in love with it more the more I get like familiarized with everything. And I, I would say that that is probably got some of the most art galleries I've ever seen in my life anywhere. And there's okay. places like Carmel that have some space, Santa Barbara's. And there's more like high end art there than I've I've ever seen anywhere else. And in fact, I got to talk to some of the brokers over there and meet them. And they're like, yeah, this is like one of the like meccas for like good art. And <clears throat> we got we Katrina and I were walking down there one of the nights when like most of the shops were getting closed. And so it was cool. We got to hang. I met this guy and like uh, that was running the show and and uh, or the sh- uh, store and been doing it for like over a decade. And got like this like personal tour of the back of the other stores and like the storyline behind all these different artists and it was like a real a real cool experience for her and I, and he took us to this the, the, one of their other buildings that was like closed up for the night and like back and showed us this art. There's this guy I'll show you, I'll I'll share with the uh, the YouTube team because I took pictures of some of this art, but like all the artwork is like an X-ray, it's just X-ray photos. And I'll show you guys. So, and of course, it'll pop up on here for the YouTubers. Like, you know, you it was. It's just like, but what it was required to take an X ray. Toy cars and places. Well, you know, like you know, full size vehicles and people, right? So there, so oh. it's oh. huge, and it takes like ten hours of stillness to shoot. Like, like for an X ray, I guess to go all the way through an engine of a car. And show the other side. It has to be it has to be running for like ten hours. Wow! So the the artist has I don't know how expensive an X ray machine that is bigger big enough to shoot a full size car, yeah. and an airplane. Yeah. I think he insanely had insanely expensive. Yeah, like, yeah. insanely yeah. expensive. And then what I did like he's telling us all about. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. I'm like, it's crazy that nobody's. I've I've never seen anyone try and copy this art. He's like, well, <laughs> first of all, you have to have the money to afford an x right there and then also he goes you see all the the all the skeletons and he goes that's you 
you'd have to get a human to sit there for 10 hours. None of those, those are all cadavers. Of course. So Otherwise, he, you get too much radiation. Yeah. Wow. So he sets up these cadavers, he has, and they're, it's like it's actually really cool art. It looks really, really cool. And then you get to hear the backstory oh, on shit. it and realize how it's made, and you're like, oh, shit, wow. that's wild. Do you, yeah. you guys huh. know? You guys want to know the first commercial uses of x-rays? Do you guys know? No. Uh, commercial use? What do you I mean by like that? I've heard this. I don't remember. Like though. retail uses. This is true. You would go to buy shoes. And in order to see if the shoe fit you well, you put your foot in the shoe and they would do an x-ray. Wow. And they would do this on oh, kids. They would do this on adults. They would do this on everybody. <laughs> they realize they how bad it's fun. Foot. Do it they multiple would times. They would x-ray your foot wow. to see if, you're, if the shoe fit well. Oh, that's interesting. Didn't they also use them in diamond mines? Oh, yeah, dude. Did you know that? The De Beers? No, I didn't know that. The De Beers diamond mines? At, when workers would finish working... They would x-ray them to see if they were smuggling any oh diamonds Oh, my God. Out. Like, they need any other... <laughs> <laughs> Stop by <buying> Horrible. <laughs> Stop by diamonds. Dude, they, like, breathing dust and, like, all day long. Yeah, like, here we oh, go. Let's God, just hammer that. Like horrible chance. conditions. Terrible. Oh, that's wild. I just yeah. text Doug, because I don't know if Doug can pull it up or not, but I just sent you over. But I thought that was really cool. There was a lot of other ones, other pieces that I thought were really fascinating. <laughs> so I was telling him the story, too. I said... Yeah, my partners and I, I said, we were we were looking for art to put on all the walls. And so we came down here and you know, like I said, we, we shopped all day and bought nothing because everything is like over the top expensive. And we're like, ah, this is a short term rental. I don't know if I want to put a hundred thousand dollar piece of art <laughs> on the walls all over the place. Be, the art would be worth more than the goddamn house would after Jeez. we fill all the walls. Is that it right there, Doug? Scroll it up. Oh, yeah, that's it. Scroll up. Yeah, let's see. No, TV on the bottom. Oh, one. yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. I, yeah, I switched the wrong TV here. Yeah, can you no see worries. it? No, I don't. You, you can see it. We can see part of it. You have to scroll Oh, I see. I see okay, it. got Finally, it. Finally, I'm winning. The, there you go. Oh, so oh go. cool. Persona motorcycle. So he put a cadaver on a motorcycle? Wow. All kind bro, cars, planes, uh, uh like in position and all the How do you get a dead body to do like how do you where I, do you go? That's I thought yeah. that it was that was the stuff. And then also you gotta think because it's x-rayed, you can't like put things to hold it or in place. So I don't know how the hell he he did all this, but super famous artist. I don't know if you could probably find out who the name is so I can shout out the actual artist. Interesting. All right, I got a, I got a shout out. I don't know if I shouted this person out yet, but they're on Twitter, and um, they they've got really they've got a really good page. They post about studies and strength training. It's uh, maybe I did shout it out. Let me know if I did. It's Twitter and it's at m a n g a a n one fifty. So at m a n g a n one fifty. Um, just great, great posts, great stuff on studies on health and strength training. He's a microbiologist um, and also a fitness person. And it's so Twitter far, on X where on, you follow? On X, yeah. And it's just, it's one of the best accounts I've found. If you like studies, you like breakdowns of studies, and you like somebody to kind of cut through all the, all the crap, check it out. There awesome. You Do you want to maximize your sleep? Literally make it even more recuperative. Build more muscle, burn more body fat, reduce cravings. Well, there's a product called Sleep Breakthrough. Now, this is not a pharmaceutical. It doesn't make you all drowsy and groggy when you wake up. It actually just improves the quality of your sleep, and it's backed by scientific studies. Go check them out. Go to sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10 and get yourself a discount. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Mark from the UK. Mark, what's happening? How can we help you? How are you doing? Yeah, great. Thanks for inviting me on, guys. You got it. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so let's go into the question and a little bit of background. How, how do you want to start it? Yeah, go for it. Ask your question. Well, uh, we can actually see your question too. So, uh, you uh, okay. Can, yep. Yeah. So, um, basically, I'm about 49 years old. I started back up weight training consistently about 18 months ago with the um, MAPS Anabolic. Uh, prior to that, I was pretty active until my mid th sort of early 30s when I got my uh, a back injury and stopped. And also got married and had kids as well, so that sort of stops you from doing quite a bit. Um, so prior to that, I never really de uh, deadlifted and, until I started on MAPS Anabolic, and I learned from you guys the importance of that exercise. Um, and I was always worried about basically hurting my back again, or, you know, while I was weight training before, I was just, in the old days, it's like a, something you sort of, you know, sometimes avoided because you're worried about hurting yourself. But ironically, since I've been deadlifting, my back's been pretty flawless and I'm not had any issues at all for the last sort of year or so. Um, but yeah, my query is basically I've been just using a hex bar to do the actual ex <coughs> exercise with. And um, I, I basically chose that because I thought it was the safest option to do. But I um, just wanted to know if I was missing out on anything. 
Okay. So, on the okay. So let's talk about um, injury first. Injuries yeah. during exercise or movement happen because of weakness. Now, weakness in the context of your overall body strength and in the context of the movement you were attempting or, or trying to do. So it doesn't necessarily mean someone's weak. For example, let's say you have a very strong bodybuilder who could deadlift yeah, yeah. a lot of weight, but let's say their, their QL muscles is one of the lateral, let's say stabilizers of the low back, doesn't match the strength that the other prime movers uh, can move. So now you have an imbalance. So it's, it's caused by weakness, but it's in the context of your overall body. So that's how injuries happen. So a deadlift will hurt you if you uh, are not strong enough to perform the deadlift with the right stability and technique and all that stuff, okay? Yeah, so that's yeah. number one. A hex bar is a lower risk version of a deadlift because it's less technical. So the more technical an exercise is, uh, the higher the risk is because you, you, your form, it's, it's harder to maintain perfect form or better form with a more technical exercise. And a hex bar just places the weight more at your sides. It involves a little bit more quadricep. There's less posterior chain uh, activation. So for people who, let's say, are learning the deadlift or not comfortable with their technique or form or stability, a hex bar is a fine substitute. Are you missing out on anything? I mean, not really. The only thing I would say you're missing out on is the fact that you're not working on something uh, that you may still have, let's say, a small imbalance with. So if you were my client, Mark, what I would do is I would slowly move you to a straight bar with careful technique, form, make sure we stabilize your core, work on core stability, do rotational exercises, lateral stability, that kind of stuff. Because I want you to be able to deadlift. That doesn't mean we always have to deadlift, but I want yeah, you yeah. to be able to do that because, uh, let's face it, in the real world, when you lift something off the ground, mm -hmm. it's almost never in a hex bar position. It's almost always in front of you, which is more like a deadlift. Uh, it's, a, it's a very classic kind of hip hinge movement that we don't necessarily want to lose the ability to do. So I would say that's the only thing you're missing out on. But if you never straight bar deadlifted, only hex bar deadlifted, did other exercises, you'd probably be okay. So I'd really leave it up to you. But again, if you were my client, I wouldn't keep you there. I would say, okay, why can't we do this exercise? Why are we afraid of it? Let's address this and let's slowly progress you. Yeah, there's not a lot of pure posterior chain type exercises that uh, compare to deadlift like that. So I would say, you know, to, to Sal's point, the, the hex bar does, you know, help in terms of lowering the risk a bit with that. And it does activate posterior chain, but it also helps to kind of balance it out uh, just like a squat more so and, and a little bit less on the hip hinge. So um, to, to just kind of refine that hip hinge and get, you know, your, your hamstrings a little bit more involved, your glutes, like, you know, up your back and, and just really focus exclusively on that because we're so anterior driven already like everything you're doing uh on a daily basis is out in front of you and so to be able to kind of counter that a bit more and focus on the strength of that uh, has a lot of value but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go crazy with the load uh just to be able to you know practice that that form and that technique we're, we're obviously all going to say the same thing that we'd want to move you towards the deadlift but i do want to point out that <clears throat> it's a bit of splitting hairs to put too much stress on it also like the fact that you are hex bar deadlifting if you have i don't know how long it's been if it's been a year or two years since you've been doing that mm -hmm. and you've progressed uh, yeah, yeah. The, have you progressed the weight in that time too are you like continuing oh yeah significantly yeah i mean uh 120 kilos is what i can do on so on the on the strength phase yeah the, nice the the yeah so i mean i think you're doing great right so if you were a yeah. client of mine we were really we were scared or nervous about our our previous back injury that we had and we wanted to do hex bar before we even moved to like a, a traditional deadlift, it really would be there. Th and it's, this is the one area that's challenging for us on, on a podcast like this is, you know, based off of what each of us would be seeing you, like if you were a client coming in would be how fast I would progress you to that deadlift. Like if I looked at you and you're doing that hex bar and you're strong and you look good, I'm like, Oh, we could easily go to the deadlift and just lighten the load and just really slowly work on technique. You've now built a solid foundation in the hip hinge that I think that we can progress it. It's just a more technical lift and it's, and you, there's, which of course means more risk, but if we cut the load in half, work on technique, you'll soon get to a place where you'll be able to deadlift as much as you can do with the hex bar, if not more. Yeah. So Mark, also, if you do try to go with the straight bar, consider that the average person with good technique and form, okay, so no no 
fear, no injury, no instability issues, will lift between 25 to maybe 30, 35 kilos less on a straight bar yeah. anyway. Okay. Yeah. So, so like bench down. Yeah. yeah. So like if I could hex bar deadlift 600 pounds, then my max on the deadlift would be closer to maybe 530, 550 in terms of pounds. So when you do try the straight bar, you're going to have to light it, lighten it a lot. Yeah. Not just what I said, yeah. but much more, right? Yeah. So what did you half. say your your strength, you're in a strength phase, 140 kilos, did you say? 120 kilos. Yeah, so I would go, yeah. uh, you know, I'll go less than half. 135. Oh, okay. put, put, 40, put 45s on each side. No, no, no. Uh, he, he, I would go, yeah, I would go less than half the weight because he's also working on stuff. I would make it very light. I would not try to make it a workout. And I would just really perfect the form if that's the direction you want to go. So when I when I do the hex bar, I get like, um, I was getting like, uh, when I went heavy, I got like a quivering vibration in my right, so left abdomen down the bottom, okay. which I can notice. Yeah, so that could be a core stability issue. Um, so that, I would really work on bracing the core. Oh, okay. I would do rotational exercises. Well, yeah, that opens up another Windmill. discussion now. Maybe, I mean, if you've been running mostly anabolic, have you ran performance yet or symmetry? No, I've got, um, I've had uh, Prime Pro. Okay. Um, I mean, I've got, I've actually, yeah, one question I was going to ask was based on my right side, I always seem to get issues. So I've got like, um, at the moment, I'm, I'm, you know, I find it hard to sort of move my elbow up. Sorry, mm -hmm. my, yeah. And then um, I've got tight hamstrings that, you know, when I walk, I get a, you know, sore knee. And then when I get out of bed in the morning, my foot on that side oh. is always a bit funny in the morning. Yeah, okay. you, you need to go to map symmetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. the move. So yeah. before we even worry about the, you know, straight bar, bar deadlift, yeah, straight yeah. Bar deadlift yeah. let's move into symmetry and do that. And then when you come back to say, let's say anabolic, then mm -hmm. we could we could move to like the barbell deadlift and see what happens there. But I think you're going to benefit from unilateral work, some rotational work, some isometric work. You're going to get all that in symmetry. So that those issues on that side, do you reckon they're just a, a total imbalance issue? You Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's yep. that's, yeah. that's definitely what that says. So. Yeah, Doug's going to send that over to you. So that's the direction you should go. Oh, brilliant! I really, I really appreciate that. And, and this that. is, I mean, here's a perfect example of you know, as you've given us more information, we would see that if you were a client and you're moving in front of us, and so that is what would dictate us going like, hey, let's get right to the barbell right. deadlift. If we saw that you were having this movement issue and you're right, you're giving. If you were to give that feedback first, all of us would have jumped and said, oh, well, let's not worry about the barbell deadlift yet. Let's go to totally. symmetry. Let's fix the fix the imbalances, and then we'll move into something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right. So Doug's going to send that over to you, Mark. Oh, thank you. I yeah, just want to say, you guys, I really appreciate all the content. Yeah, I found um, you, you guys probably, well, quite a few years ago, you are on a Dr. Ricio podcast. Yeah. He's like a functional medicine guy. Yep, yep. And then that, um, listening to you really got me back into, I mean, there's a lot of people online who, you know, talk about fitness, but having the three of you together and a real balanced view of all three of you is, is brilliant and it really stimulated me and you know, educated me about getting back into fitness and you know it's been really good for me basically i appreciate, so I really appreciate it. it that's awesome thank you mark thank you mark appreciate it have a good one cool. all right all right thank take you. care guys thank you yeah i think it's important to communicate um uh how injuries happen because uh there's a lot of um i guess misunderstandings around it and it's it, it is it's always weakness but it's in the context of the person's body and their ability. So you can be very strong, injure yourself with something that seems benign, and then you're, 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 you're left questioning what the hell happened? How did I hurt myself? I'm so strong in the gym. It's because there is a muscle or a movement that is weak in the context of everything else that you could do. It's mm -hmm. an imbalance, and that's where it comes from. This is how strong people hurt themselves. It's also how weak people hurt themselves. It's all, it's all the same. Well, to that point, um, the reason why right away everyone jumped to symmetry uh, and and or talking about rotational stuff is he's talked about having a strain in his abdominal from when doing that, which means he probably had a little bit of shift right. when yeah, he well, did. Symmetry, and then symmetry. and that little bit of shift when he was lifting heavy, you know, hex bar deadlift is because he's got very little strength in the rotational or the stability component of his abdominals. And so... Training that is a and bulletproofing that before we progress him into a barbell deadlift, which again, this is the nuances of of training and teaching people how to lift properly. And it's not as simple as this exercise is better than that right, exercise. Right, right. It's like, well, it matters. Right, right. And it, just to add to this, it's like you if you have a, a regular car and you throw a thousand horsepower in there and you don't uh, reinforce and strengthen the frame, you'll twist it. And it's not because the car was weak before. It was weak for the new strength that it has. So, again, I want to make that point to everybody listening. 
that injuries happen because of imbalances, mm -hmm. because of weakness, not because you're weak. Our next caller is Adrian from Massachusetts. Adrian, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. What's up? I'm, how are you? Good, 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 good man. man. Doing so good, so good. So awesome to see you, to talk to you. I'm um, really happy I got to have this opportunity. Well, tell um, us, man. Just want to... Um, yeah, just first to say, like, obviously, I, you know, like everybody else, I really appreciate all the, the quality information that you guys bring to the fitness space. Um, and not just about the physical components, right. But how important mental and behavioral aspects are as well. And personally, how much you guys share about fatherhood experiences, business, personal lives, everything, all that kind of really resonates with me. And, you know, so your vulnerability has really kind of allowed me to jump in and really, um, buy into everything. Uh, you know, I've been working out for almost 15 years and I never bought a single program until I listened to you guys for just a couple of months. And I bought the RBG bundle, uh, just because, you know, your passion and your knowledge and everything just really, you know, sold me. And it's an amazing investment, you know, that I highly recommend for anybody and don't regret it. So thank you. Oh, you awesome, got it, man. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Um, so that kind of leads into my question. Um, so I'm also a dad. I have, uh, three girls, um, and I'm actually a full-time lawyer. I'm in my office right now. Um, but I'm also, uh, within the past few years, I became a group boxing fitness instructor. And I teach like eight to 10, sometimes more if I'm subbing classes a week. Um, and, you know, really love fitness as well. I'm trying to kind of expand that side of my career. Uh, but um, as you can imagine, I don't really have much time for my own workouts. Um, and after I bought the bundle, um, I started with anabolic um, and, uh, you know, I, I ended up getting through it. But I think when I, you know, initially put the question out there, I was kind of getting into phase three. And, you know, there were only certain days that I could kind of fit in a full foundational day. And so let's say if I had those days set on Monday and Wednesday, um, if something happened, you know, like up, up late with the kids working on a case or whatever, and let's say that, you know, one day, which was scheduled to be the day when I would do that, you know, tougher, longer workout didn't necessarily kind of match up in terms of where I was either physically or being tired or just maybe sometimes not having the time. It'd be hard to find the time again until maybe another to the following week. Right. And it'd be, you know, four or five, maybe six days or so um, before I got to it again. Um, so just wondering about how I kind of managed the time around that in terms of what I ended up doing was really just, you know, if I didn't get to day two in, in a certain week and then it wasn't until the following week when I was normally going to be doing the day one foundational day, I would just go, you know, go with day two and kind of go from there. And it kind of ended up that I ended up extending the program, I think a couple of weeks, but still, um, you know, finished it. And it really became more of a struggle, I think in phase three, where there was, uh, you know, where it was three foundational days. So it was harder to kind of find the three days to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, like that was my question in terms of programming wise, you know, if that makes sense what I did or if there, you know, if there was another way to handle it or, or, or whatnot, or maybe it was just too much in terms of everything else that I was also doing, um, you know, with classes. And also I, you know, would do at least one or two boxing workouts a day as well. I mean, a week. Yeah. So you're, you're not going to like my answer because I, I can tell you're a high <laughs> achiever. Okay. So you're a lawyer, you got three kids and you want to teach boxing group class, which means you're also doing the class, right? As an instructor, I mean, you're not maybe doing the full class, but you're doing a lot of the class. So sure. you're working out. Um, you're doing a lot. I mean, there, there, there's a lot there. And um, I think the way you handled it was right, yeah. but I would bet that you're probably still overdoing it. I think you probably have that tendency. It's probably served you well. Obviously, you're, you're probably pretty successful. My question is, why, why do another 10 hours a week of group classes on top of being a lawyer and a dad that's so much so much to handle and manage uh why why do the extra yeah i can't imagine the 40 dollars an hour is is making up a difference for you. <laughs> yeah 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 no it's definitely not about the money um i think you know like i said when i, I got into fitness boxing is kind of the, the thing that got me into it the the, the the most and i kind of found a passion for there and then it was kind of just like my own outlet um, but I always, I really love working with people and helping people um, in, in different aspects. And I've, I've always thought about doing that. And then over the pandemic, um, you know, the lawyer stuff wasn't happening as much. And so once gym started opening back up, I kind of thought, well, let me see, uh, you know, I can do this a little bit on the side. And then I just really, really fell in love with it and then passionate about it. And, you know, those are like the best parts of my day is working with clients and teaching classes and doing those things. Um, 
And so I've been just looking for more opportunities and trying to think um, on how I can create a business out of it. Um, you know, but obviously, like you said, it's, it's a challenge and I'm sure, you know, I, you guys talk all the time how, you know, it's not necessarily the most lucrative thing to do, um, you know, becoming a personal trainer, getting in, into the business. But, um, I know that it's kind of where I find the most fulfillment at least right now. So it's, it's, it's mainly that. Yeah, so love what, your answer. What I, I love this question because there's, there's like multiple directions that we can go here. Right. And it really depends on like, your feedback with me. Like if you were a client and you're asking mm. me this question and you're frustrated with maybe like your progress, I, I might say something. But if you looked at me and you're like, Adam, I, I really, I love what I'm doing. I love the classes. I do like getting in there, weight training. Am I, am I just fucking up the program by doing it the way I do it? I'd say, well, yeah, you, you're probably overdoing it. Like Sal said, I'd say, you know, maybe just one foundational day a week and just stick to that. And then the days when you have mm. extra time, you probably need the rest and recovery. You got three kids, you've got, you're a lawyer, you're doing a bunch of shit. Um, but if you were complaining to me, like, man, my body just is not progressing and I, I'm not seeing the results for all the work I'm putting in, I said, well, yeah, you're putting in way too much work if we're trying to progress to mm -hmm. build, build, to build your body, to change your composition. Like we're not going about it right. But if you told me like, I love what I do and I enjoy, and I enjoy every aspect of this. I enjoy the classes. I love the energy from it. I like getting in there and lifting a little bit myself. What's that balance look like? I'd say that's what it kind of looks like. But I know the direction that Sal went right away is like, okay, this isn't the, the best way to skin this cat. There's a better way to do this if you wanted to see more progress, more results. So this is where this gets like nuanced of it really depends on what you want from this. Like, yeah. what are you trying to achieve by doing all, all these things? Is it, are you trying to change the physique or are you kind of happy? Because I just saw your Instagram, you're, you're in great shape. So you don't need. Yeah, if you're kind of happy with that, and, and you're just really strength training to supplement and support, uh, you know, your venture in with your classes and to uh, keep that going, and that's something you want to keep in going because you enjoy it. I mean, that's then that's your goal. So it's it's pretty much like how you have it laid out. Uh, if you did want to spend more time and focus on the actual strength and move the needle in that direction, we'd have to like adjust things a bit. To yeah, the classes. Space. We'd yeah. have to reduce the classes if you really if you're like, man, my deadlift isn't getting stronger, my body composition. Well, okay, yeah, that's because your body is taxed, dude, and you're and you're running the red line a lot, and you're not allowing it to recover and build strength. But if you said. I mean, I love it and, and I'm enjoying it and I'm happy with the way I look and feel like, I'm, I mean, the only thing, and your intuition was actually right. The way you handled it, it was, is it, I would have probably told you, I would have pushed you more like just one day a week. I would have said, Hey bro, even though you mm -hmm. could, you could do two this week, you don't need to, you're already kickboxing 10 hours out of the, out of the week. Plus your one day of foundational yeah. training. That's plenty. You're going to get yeah. stronger. You're going to yeah. build muscle. You're going to stay fit. That's more than enough with that. I would just tell you to follow the program. So you kind of were already going that way. Your intuition, I think, was right. I would probably push you in that direction a little more. But again, a lot of this has to do with the feedback I'm getting from you and what you're telling me you want to get out of this. Yeah, look, it's like this, okay? What's more valuable to you? And I'm going to ask this to generally anybody listening right now. Is an extra, let's say, four pounds of muscle and a 2% a loss of body fat, is that more important than life quality? And the answer should be no. For, for everybody, quality of life is more important. So if you're doing this for quality of life, enjoying your family and your business, and you like teaching classes, you're on the right path. Once a week is probably going to be ideal most of the time. And then one thing I'll add, and I don't know if you already do this, I would imagine you do because you seem like you're pretty dialed in, is you're going to have to be really structured about your sleep because that would really mess you up with everything else. You know, Go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, and really take that seriously. And that'll afford you the ability to be able to do all the things that you do because otherwise it'll get really difficult. But I think you're on the right path, dude. I don't think, I think you made the right decision. I, I would go once a week, foundational workout, um, and you can pick a foundational workout for MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, or some of our other programs. MAPS Symmetry would probably be good also, just to kind of balance things out, keep the muscle, the strength, the mobility, and the stability. So you can keep being a badass. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no, I, I think it's definitely kind of more um, along the lines of um, I, I enjoy what I'm doing. And, um, you know, certainly, you know, there are times, right, where I, I, I love to build more muscle or drop a couple, you know, percentage off the body fat. And I think, you know, sometimes it, it goes along with like short term girl goals. Like if I have a trip coming up, then I'll really focus in and right. I'll dial mm -hmm. in. And then I'm definitely looking at the sleep and different things like that. There was a time where I 
I kind of used, I think one of your episodes talked about um, like kind of getting your deadlift up in a short period of time. And I kind of followed all of those things and kind of went with that for like 30 days. And I, and I, and I put about 25 pounds on, uh, wow. you know, on, on the bar, you know, so, um, so for sure, um, I, I know that, you know, obviously all the things I'm doing, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to like kind of um, going in the, the great physique direction. Um, but, but yeah, I think overall, I, I know that I'm sacrificing some, you know, in that aspect, but like you said, quality of life, I think balances out. Yeah. That's what matters the most, yep. bro. If you, if, if you feel life, good, yeah. and everything's moving well, who cares? Yeah. It's it. You're, yeah. I yeah. think what you're doing is, is, is totally fine. And you're, it, it all depended on if you were to tell me something about your strength or the way you looked and you want to change body composition, then I'd say, yeah, we're not, yeah. you know, we, it's so interesting how we, and I think it's because, I mean, let's, we are, if you applied like being a lawyer, the harder you study, the more you put into it, the better you are at it, right? I mean, that's just, that's how it is in almost every aspect. Training is not that way. Training to get stronger or training to change your body composition is not the more I do, yeah. the more effort I put into the right it, balance. the more I'm going to return. It's it's different. And so I think that's always the challenge for people is, you know, you think like you, you got something coming up, let's say in three weeks, you're going to Vegas, you're like, ah, man, I'd like to get a little more shredded. And you think, oh, I'm going to do more than I'm already doing. It's like, that's not the right approach for someone who's already doing as much as you are. There's a better strategy if that was the goal. But if your ultimate goal is like, I love, I'm passionate about what I do. I love teaching my classes. I want to be a strong guy. I mean, I think- And you're fit and healthy. I mean, yeah. it'd be no different than you being sacrificing time with your family so you can make an extra 10 grand a year. You know, if you're already doing really well, are you going to notice that extra 10 grand? It's not going to do much for you. Uh, same thing with adding another three, four pounds of muscle and dropping, you know, a, a couple percent body fat, right? It's not going to make that big of a difference. And when you compare it to feeling good and having the time to spend with your family and doing things you enjoy, it's, I mean, it's not worth it. Adrian, do you have the flexibility with the teaching classes where you can kind of dictate, oh, right now I'm going to change or I'm going to do 10 hours. Maybe next week I'll do two. Or do you have to kind of like stick to your 10 hours? How does that work? It it's a, it's a set schedule. Yeah. Okay. So I have a certain amount of a week. I do sometimes there are options in terms of subbing. So if somebody else can't do a class, maybe I might pick up an, a one or two extra. Right. But I can, I can decline that, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's how that's, if you know, again, if you're a client or a buddy of mine and you're like, yo, we got Vegas in, in a month and a half, like, what should I do? And I'd be like, okay, well let's cut back on those classes. Let's pick up a little bit more strength training. Let's dial the diet in. Like that's kind of the suggestion I would give you. Like when you have those, those yeah. moments in, in your, your yeah. your year but other than that i yeah. think i think you i think you're on the right track i think your intuition was right i think what all of us said is just i'd cut to one day a week with that if you're okay you're doing 10 yeah. hours even if you were just doing five hours to be honest with you if you're doing yeah. five hours of teaching classes especially if you're actually doing the the classes with that's them a lot. that's a lot and and yeah. one yeah. one day of strength training is enough to actually support you and actually keep good amount of muscle mass on you. Another option we didn't, you know what we didn't say this to you, and I'd love to give it to let's give it to you since we, you already have an RGB is the Maps 15. Maps 15 would complement kind of what you're doing because you could also do that instead of one big day of training is like little micro workouts throughout yeah, the week. Two exercises a day. Yes, I actually think that you might, and that would be something fun to play with someone like you. Here's a good example of like how like, I might test that with you. Go, hey, you know what? Actually, instead of doing like anabolic, let's run 15. And let's just do that. And that actually might yeah, bring down show, the total. Show up to the gym like uh, 20 minutes early, do a couple lifts, and then teach your class. And that'll be yeah. uh, that'll be a, a bulk of the workouts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Play around with that and then get back to us. I'd like to actually really like to hear how, how you respond to that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, man. All right, Adrian. All right. Do you mind if I kind of share my Instagram? I know mean, you mentioned it. Uh... Yeah, we got it. Oh, yeah. What, oh, yeah it's, we, it's, we, what is it, Doug? You just had it up there. Yeah, well, go ahead, Adrian. I don't have it written right uh, in front of me. <laughs> it's uh, the Fit Life Lawyer. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Fit Life Lawyer. Yeah. And the boys on YouTube will definitely post some of the stuff while we're talking yeah. about you, so you'll see it on. By the yeah, way, I yeah, like yeah. how you balance right, out. Nice. I like how you balance things out. You know what I mean? Like I'm a lawyer, so I also want to help people and do good things on top of it. And yeah. Help people. With <laughs> <friends>. <laughs> yeah. You know exactly the lawyer part. You know, not not as much with the help and stuff. So. <laughs> I'm just I'm just kidding, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate. No, it. Thanks, I man. Know. Yeah. Keep it up, man. Thanks, man. Take, Take it easy, thanks, guys. That's so we, so we can get into heaven. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get pay your penance. Yeah. yeah. No, it's you know. Listen, um, this is from personal experience. I, this is just a struggle for me is I'll trade life quality for, you know, extra 10 pounds of the bar, a little extra muscle. And uh, it's just the lesson I got to keep revisiting because eventually I go, is this worth it? You know, I mean, it, the way I feel, is it worth this extra whatever? It's not that big. Nobody else notices but me. 
And I think that uh, if you want longevity in the sense that you're doing this consistently, life quality is what will keep you doing it forever, not squeezing out an extra, you know, couple pounds of muscle or whatever. That's not that's not what brings that, you know. Yeah, that's just maturity. I mean, as if you've been in it for as long as any of us or, you know, if you've just been in the gym a long time and been after it, it's like you're your priorities shift and, and to be able to support like things that you love doing and activ activities you love to do and all that, you can readjust it all to make it sort of balanced. And, um, you know, at some point you're going to get past the whole ego side of lifting. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things there. One, I think it, that's kind of natural for type a personalities. Uh, and then two, I think people that consider themselves fitness people, you know, uh, he's obviously building towards kind of building a business that way. He's putting himself out there on Instagram. Obviously you guys are fitness people that are all over the internet. There's a bit of the culture that just, uh, that surrounds that, that you have to look this you get caught up a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, the people that get a lot of the attention have the craziest looking physiques or the strongest dude deadlifting or squatting. Yeah. And if you're, I mean, you, I mean, I see comments on our, our YouTube and stuff like that. Like if I'm not fucking Mr. Jack guy, like I'm getting, you know, well, who are these guys telling me how to, yeah. to train. Extra? So <laughs> there's a bit of that culture Weak. around that. And that can, that can fuck with you. And especially if you're already a type a person where you are a go getter, it's like someone says, something like that your your personality is the type to like oh i'm gonna show them you know what i'm yeah. saying i'm gonna i'm gonna get after it i mean it takes a totally. it takes a lot of uh, discipline humility to not to not allow that noise to get into what's what's probably best for your body totally i'm sorry you feel that way i think you look great adam <laughs> our next caller is brett from texas hey how's it going how can we help you good how are you guys doing good doing great Good. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, I'm sure you guys hear this all the time, but you really helped a lot of people. Um, when I was starting on like all the weightlifting stuff, it was really confusing and people were giving me all kinds of mixed answers about macros and things. So your podcast was like a real resource for me. So thank you very much. Thank you. Love that. All right. Yeah. And, um, I, so my question is about hypermobility. Um, it seems like there's a lot of people that touch on it, but not a lot of specialists and just like a, not a lot of um, resources overall. I did a lot of research and I kind of went down the rabbit hole when I had this revelation that this might be where a lot of my pain is coming from. And um, when I originally reached out, I could really only find like one episode of Mind Pump that talked about it. Um, and like Sal, you had mentioned that it was very rare and um you know, I don't know how old the podcast was, but like from the research I've done, it seems like it's actually about 15 to 20 percent of the population that is struggling with this. So um, my question is two parts. So I'll just start with the first one. Um, I'm I've been doing the same kind of mobility warm up for like the last probably like th three years, four years. Um, it's a lot of stretching. Um, a lot of traditional mobility. And I'm just wondering, um, like with this pain, like what type of warm up do you guys recommend? Wait, give me a little bit more of a definition of what you mean by traditional stretch. Are you like uh, getting it? Like, give me a stretch that you're doing. And are you getting in that position and holding it? Or are you moving through a range of motion and creating, uh, you know, yes. what, tell me. So like you could start with um, like knee holds and then, um, you know, just stretching up and then maybe like downward dog, cat cow, um, sort of like yoga, like, like mobility movements um and then some lunges um and and recently i've started to to shift a little bit and do stuff like more with bands but um it's more of like a yoga based kind of stretching warm-up but i'm super mobile like just standing here i could literally put my hands flat on the ground um and i think that i'm, I'm wondering that if i'm maybe stretching things more and it's making pain worse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, hypermobility, there's a, a, a range of what would be considered hypermobile, but, uh, the kind of hypermobility that I've worked with, um, I, I worked with a woman that were, it, it was quite extreme. I mean, literally she could bend her, she never stretched. It's just how she was. And, um, it posed problems for her. She would hurt herself because being very, if when your mobility doesn't match your strength or your stability, it's instability. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this can go in either direction, right? You could be so, you could be very tight 
and not have strength to stabilize movement or at least uh, not be able to move outside of a range of motion without any weakness. And then that causes instability. Or you could be so mobile that your strength isn't able to support the ranges of motion that you move in. So essentially what's happening, and by the way, have you been diagnosed as hypermobile or was this self-diagnosis? Uh, definitely self-diagnosis, but like, I'll show you something really gross. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, see. I don't know if you see that, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's a thing. And I was a competitive cheerleader, like Tumblr. So, um, there was probably some innate hypermobility. And I think like all the years of just stretching and holding my leg up yeah. next to my head mm -hmm. and whatever else, um, probably made it worse. Okay. So, but. so here's, here's what happens with, with muscles that allow them to, um, extend. Uh, is your central nervous system essentially controls the muscle's ability to stretch. Uh, and it's based off of your CNS believing what is safe and what's not safe. Okay. Now there, there's sometimes a, I don't know, for lack of a better term, miscommunication or misunderstanding. And the CNS is like, yeah, we could just bend all over the place and this is okay. And so what ends up happening is you move within ranges of motion that you don't necessarily have the strength uh, or the stability to support. And this can cause pain. This can cause injury because there's no, the governors aren't necessarily there. So let, first let's talk about what you shouldn't do. You should do zero static stretching. You should do zero anything that aims to increase range of motion, unless that range of motion is matched with strength and stability. If it's matched with strength and stability, it's okay. So I would do zero static stretching. In fact, I wouldn't, and this may be something that you do, I wouldn't sit in positions no. that are stretches for other people. It's not a goal to get to end range for you. It's a goal to to gain muscle tension throughout the entire range. So meaning like, have you ever done any kin stretches? These are these are stretches where you're actually adding intensity in terms of isometric type tension. So you're squeezing your muscles all the way through that range of motion. So um, actually we do have, we do have a, uh, um, what's it called? Your, uh, webinar webinar that, uh, Adam did where he actually takes you through a lot of these poses that, um, start out at your hips, work your way up all the way up through the kinetic chain to the shoulders. Um, so you can address a lot of these, uh, I guess, instabilities more than anything, because really the, the problem isn't that, you know, you're, you're flexible, you're obviously flexible. It's being able to have access to that and have strength in each part of that range. Uh, yeah. So to that, that would be your focus is really slow down and really connect and squeeze and, and try to, to work your way out of these positions. Yeah. And are, now what I said earlier about sitting in, do you sit like Indian style or with your leg up on something? Do you sit in these like weird, okay, don't do that anymore. That's very common it's, with people, with people who are hypermobile. So hard. Yeah. It's really, yeah. it's really common because it probably feels good. Um, because it probably yeah. gives you some feedback and you can feel your body. Otherwise it feels like you're kind of loose. That's okay. I want you to sit and put yourself in positions that where you're working or whatever, where you're not in a weird position that most people wouldn't be able to get into. Okay. Because sometimes in fact, children can, can create this position when they sit. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but they'll tell people now, don't let your kids sit in hurdlers position. You ever see that where they sit on the floor and their, their legs are bent outside of their body. Like a, it's called a hurdler stretch. And they'll say, don't do that. That creates okay. hypermobility in the hips. Right? So I don't want you to sit or put yourself in any static position where an average person would have a tough time getting into because that's contributing to the problem. Now, the second part, Justin gave you the answer, but I'm going to give you, and I want you to go to that webinar. It's primeprowebinar.com and watch it. But I'm going to tell you what to do with your normal workouts, okay? I And I never say this, or we almost never say this to people because this is not a common situation. Yeah. But to someone like you, I would never go to my full range of motion yeah, short range on with exercises because mm -hmm. your full range of motion is unstable. Like you could go way down with squats and do all kinds of crazy stuff. I would stop you. I would squat to just below 90 degrees. I would not do a stiff-legged deadlift to where you could just bend yourself in half. I would stop where you think a healthy average person can get to. I would not do a fly where, and let my hands touch the floor. I would stop, if you were my client, I would stop you where the average healthy person could stop. So that means you're going to have to control the stop and then come back. So you're going to shorten your range of motion and build strength there. And as you get stronger there, 
and feel comfortable there. Then slowly, and I mean like half an inch at a time, move into different ranges of motion, get used to that and continue until you can build strength into in these full ranges of motion. Brett, are you, do you have any of our programs already? Um, no, I, oh. I don't. I, okay. So yeah, I, I, I mean, I would, symmetry is someone who, what I would probably start her with. I mean, <laughs> maps, I mean, she's going to traditional she, strength. Maps I know anabolic, she could do ana anabolic. Yeah. I just like the isometric component for yeah. her in it's symmetry start, to start her. Yeah. And, and plus then, the emphasis on the negative to Yes. The, yeah, so I like, I yeah. like symmetry first and then maps anabolic after that. So I'm going to have Doug give you symmetry. And then what I'm going to give you as an example to, to take, so you're not like overthinking what Sal just said is follow the model. Where, where the model takes the range of motion, that's what you that's do. That's where you stop. Don't yeah. go further just because yep. you can. What the model does in the, in the demo, that's what you mirror. Okay, so that it just literally follow it like that. And I, in symmetry is going to do get do the watch the Prime Pro webinar Justin's talking about. That'll complement what what we're talking about. Follow map symmetry to a T, and then follow the range of motion that the model is yeah. performing in the videos. Time un under tension, so really slow it down. Keep that pace really slow. So it's it's all about tempo for you and making sure you have that muscle connection. Yeah. So do you do you do yoga? Not not really, not anymore. Like I've gotten to the point where it honestly kind of hurts. Yeah. More yeah. You don't it, need to be doing that. Yeah. But. Um, First of all, thank you for the the program. That's very generous. I'm super excited to try it, and especially like the hip or the pain seems to be really bad on my right side, on my right hip. Um, I've actually started doing back squats with bands, um, and I would love to know what you guys think about that. Like a not a stretchy one, more of I feel I forget the name, but it's like, like a hip a cloth, circle like around a, your knees, a hip circle around your knees. Yeah. 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 All, all that's doing is that's fine. And what that's doing is it's helping you activate tension. some of the muscles that you need to need for stability. So, okay. Think of it this way. Do not allow your muscles or body or breath to relax while you strength train. Now, normally I would tell people to not be so tense, but for you, we're trying to create tension. So when you're grabbing the bar, squeeze it while you're doing it. Be aware of all the muscles in your body. Maintain tension. Brace your core. I want you to breathe through the mm -hmm. back of your mouth like, like a ujjayi breath, they will call it in yoga, right? You want to create tension because what I what my experience with people who are hypermobile is they'll do an exercise and it's almost like they're relaxing while they're doing the movement because that's what their body wants to do. So you're going to stay tight. You're going to hold on the bar and yeah. squeeze it and squeeze the muscles Almost that are like just somebody's going to hit you in the stomach. Yeah. And you're bracing though. And if that means you only do six reps because you get exhausted, that's okay. But we're trying to create central nervous system activation and tension, which by the way, that's why you like that hip circle around your knees. That's what it's, it's, doing. it's doing that for you. So it's yeah. not a bad thing, but also keep in mind, we're trying to get you to learn to do that intrinsically right. Right. versus having to have a tool. Cause you're not going to have a tool all day long wrapped around your knees like that. So it feels good because it's it's helping provide the the stability and the the tension that we want you to learn to but we want you to learn to do that with without the tool learning to stay tight like Sal is saying through the movements but again follow symmetry follow it to, and and that tension we're talking about is in the isometric portion so you'll get the concept from that going through that but follow those follow those programs watch the webinar that Justin uh, suggested and uh, and then just stay in touch you know what. Well, let's get you in the forum too, actually. That way we can keep an eye on you as you're going through this process. And you can, are you on Facebook? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have Doug give you free access to the forum too. That way you can give us okay. feedback as you're going through it. Because I know this can be a bit challenging. Like uh -huh. it is it is different. It is unique. We are going to tell you to shorten your range. So it's not the common stuff you'll hear us talk about. So we're going to throw you in there mm -hmm. and then give us feedback. I hate, I hate to throw it. too much at you, but one, <laughs> one good squat to, to focus on is the Dumphy squat. And we, we have a video about that as well, but it's just something that helps you really focus on how to create that kind of support system in your body and, and, and bracing effect. Yeah. Brett, Brett, do you do um, cold dip or cold showers or anything like that? Yeah, I do all the things. Good. The sauna is the cold. Windows, yeah. Avoid the sauna. Uh, and 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 uh, I would, yeah, don't do anything that makes the CNS relax the muscles while you're going through this process. Okay. But the cold is good. The cold is good. So okay. I would go uh, cold dip uh, or cold shower, and I would do that before the workout. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and just like to to kind of recap, you're saying um, I don't know if maybe the warm ups in the programs are already like cure, you know, meant for hypermobile, but I think that was kind of where I was concerned about is just going into a workout cold. Like, do you think, um, should I just not do any sort of stretching and just start like the, the, warming up with just the, the stuff that the stuff that's in prime pro that Justin talked yeah. about, that's the type of stuff that's you want to do before. First and yeah. foremost. So what, when you watch the prime pro webinar that he talked that'll about, that'll show you what you do. That'll show you movements that, you, and, and you'll see, I, I go from your ankles all the way up to your neck. So mm -hmm. when you're doing lower body movements, do the lower body type of priming movements. When you're doing upper body stuff, do the upper body. Pay attention to how he coaches yeah, it, Yeah, that's the biggest point of that is the, the cues that I'm giving yeah. to teach you yeah. how to create tension. But that's how you want, That's how you warm up is doing stuff like that before you go into yeah. it, now, not your traditional yoga stretches. Right. Now, worst case scenario, you would literally do the exercise you're supposed to do and do a couple sets of that exercise with lighter weight and just stay real tense um, because we're trying to turn things on. Okay. The a typical warm up is like getting people to improve, you know, pliability, range of motion, whatever you're like, we got to turn your CNS on. So the, the, the webinar is key, but worst case scenario in a pinch, just do the exercise you're going to do, do it lighter and try and be real tense and tight while you do it. The suggestion that Justin actually gave is a really good one. Cause it kind of lights up the whole body, the dumpy squat that he said. So yeah, we'll send to, you a link to the video. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. That's a, that's a cool one to kind of light everything up too. So, but again, you're going to be in the forum. So this way you can give us feedback as you're going through what you're noticing. If you're having any challenges, just tag us when you comment in there and the guys will help you out. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, I don't want to take up too much time, but I just did have a second part of my question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, I, so kind of just felt called to move into the world of fitness and nutrition and, um, my careers in marketing, experiential marketing, but this is kind of like where I feel like I want to go. And, um, I'm just wondering if you guys have any recommendations for like certifications or for, you know, becoming a professional oh, easy well, we're about and to yeah cool. nci is the place to go and then what's hang, that link hang, hang tight we got you this year yeah. is that yeah. ncicoaching.com is that the link there doug yeah i believe so yeah that's go there they're the best i mean they'll teach you and but they'll also teach the, you how to build the whole a business. business end of it yeah, everything that's the, the most important part the rest of it, you can get educated all kinds of different ways. If, if you haven't already, and this is for our audience listening, uh, anytime you're looking for this, the, the stuff that we recommend, you can go to mindpumppartners.com. NCI and everything else that we talk about is on there. So if you haven't scrolled mm -hmm. through that page, check it out. You'll like all the things that we, that we have on there, and the links are all right in there. Go to ncimindpump.com. They have some uh, free resources there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. ncimindpump.com. There it is. Awesome. All right, Brad. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. You got Thank it. You. Thanks for coming. Good one. Yeah, uh, Hugh, a lot of people are like, "Oh, flexibility, great. You don't get hurt." No, if it doesn't <laughs> match your strength, it's actually one of the worst uh, yeah. rates of injury. In fact, I was I would have told her she didn't even have to say. I would have asked her. I bet it's your hip, your hip, and maybe even low back. But it's almost mm -hmm. always. If you look at the hip injury rate among yoga instructors, it's uh, it's astounding. Difficult to train too. I've had and, and I've had um, younger kids with that issue, and then also adults. But um, it's just man, it's it's such a slow process, but it's really important that totally. they learn how to control their body and stay tense and be able to totally. support their joints. Fifteen to twenty percent. I didn't know that. Yeah, under the classic definition of hypermobility, but I've only worked with a couple. Yeah, where it was I've, like whoa, it was like I think, two or three. I think for me. two. I think yeah, I've had yeah. my entire. Mm -hmm career it's not mm -hmm. common our next caller is magdalini from illinois magdalini how can we help you love your name by Hi. The way. oh thank you <laughs> i love you guys i love your podcast i'm sure you get that all the time so i guess i'll just get into my question um so i just finished anabolic for the first time and i don't really feel like I gained any strength so generally i don't feel like i'm very strong and i kind of ended up finishing the program with the same amount of weights that I began with, particularly like my squat, um, my deadlifts, my bench press. And I'm just really not sure how to get stronger in the gym. Did you, Did you do it in a diet? Um, in a diet, like... Were you, were you eating less calories? Yeah. Were you trying to lean out? Were you... 
Do so track? I generally don't really count my calories. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really change anything in my diet. So I'm guessing my calories are probably a little bit on the lower side to begin with. Mm-hmm. So the other thing is too, and MAPS anabolic has three phases. So the first phase is low reps and then you kind of moderate reps. And then at the end it's high reps, just to kind of summarize, did you, or did you add reps to the weight or was it the same weight, same reps that you tested? Yeah. Like I need a little context. Um, so I, I basically followed the program, the way it's mapped out and I tried to add a little bit of weight, but I really feel like either I couldn't do it or I was just kind of afraid to add more weight Hmm. because I don't, I'm not always confident that my form is a hundred percent on point. So I don't want to put on too much weight for fear that I might injure myself. Sure. Okay. But, but did you do the same, like when you started with the program, you had, let's say X amount of pounds on the bar for a squat. And the first phase tells you to do, let's say up to five reps. Then the second phase tells you to go eight to 12. And the third phase is like 15 to 20. Did you use the same weight in every phase? Or did you lower the weight when you went to eight to 10 reps? No, I pretty much used the same weight. You got oh, a lot yeah. stronger. You got a lot stronger. Than yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you did okay. more, yeah. Oh, if you yeah. did more reps, that means you're stronger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if I did, let, okay. me, let me say this: if I did a hundred, by the pounds, way, that's like really good. Too. That's incredible yeah, strength. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I did, let's say I did a hundred pounds for five reps in phase one, and then phase two, I did a hundred pounds for ten reps, and then phase three, I did a hundred pounds for fifteen reps. Your strength exploded. Yeah. Big time. Okay. In fact, when you and, okay. and the way you know yeah, and you test go back is, to phase is go one. back to phase one and see yeah. if you can add say ten, 10 to ten to fifteen pounds to the bar, and you will be able to. Okay. I, I, without even, I know for a fact if you went say we just say hundred. If you use the same yeah. weight all the way through, you got strong, way strong. Yeah, that nobody does that. Okay. Yeah. Was this is this your first kind of foray into strength training like this? So, I've been lifting. I'm using this kind of loosely weight for at least the past 10 years, sometimes with personal trainers, other times on my own, but never really focused on uh, with the exception of one personal trainer that I worked with. I never really focused on like bench press, deadlift, squats. It was mostly like kind of dumbbell work. Um, This is really the first time I've actually been trying to get better at like my squat and my deadlifts. Mm -hmm. Um, you did, you and totally I've intention. never really done a cut or a bulk. Um, so I've just kind of, my diet isn't 100%. You, you're, you're okay. Right? That's part so, of it, but not, not huge. You, you, so okay. you, you've, there's a difference between training with weights and strength training. Okay. Okay. Training with weights means I'm using weights. So and I can use weights <clears> a million and one different ways. Right? I could do cardio with weights. I could do flexibility training with weights, right? Strength training doesn't even require weights. I could do that with body weight. I could do that with bands. But the idea behind strength training is to get stronger and to build muscle. Training with weights just means I'm trying to sweat and work out. So it sounds like this is relatively new in the sense yeah. that you're where you're doing more of a focused like strength training session. Mm-hmm. And strength is you're stronger if you do more weight for the same reps or if you do more reps with the same weight. Both of them mean you got a lot stronger. So if you use the same weight from the beginning to the end, that's way stronger. Your strength gains yeah. went up a lot. A lot. Now to uh, to touch on the diet, Magdalene, I don't, you know, we don't need to go crazy with diet. Just but track the protein. That's it. Just I, track the protein. Try me. and hit your body weight yep. and protein, and 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 that would well, that just mean, needs the building material. That'll turbocharge it all. Yeah. yeah. That's like part of the problem too. Like, I'm probably getting. I know I'm not getting enough protein. It's probably like 50 grams a day. Oh, yeah. Fat. Mm-hmm. yeah. You, if you got your protein, you go through that program again. I mean, first of all, you already had tremendous results. I just want to make that clear. Like someone to, if I go through that program, yeah, I can't, the weight I cannot the do the weight that I'm doing in phase one. I have to reduce the weight significantly by the time I get to phase three. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because that's just how it works. Like that's, that's tremendous strength gains. And if you did that in spite of like even hitting your protein intake, you hit your protein intake consistently and you go through that program again. And I think you're going to see even more gains. 
Yeah, and don't feel like, honestly, this is pretty common in terms of like the the intention going into each one of these phases. I think um, a lot of my clients, especially too, and women uh, would pick weights that they normally feel comfortable with. And so this is, this is one of those things when you drop the amount of reps that you're doing, this is a completely different type of a focus and place you need to get into psychologically uh, to where you know, you, you have to put a lot more force and, and effort into, you know, when you start loading a substantial amount more uh, weight. So uh, I could see how that, you know, didn't feel like uh, as you're moving along, like the reps, you're probably more used to doing more reps than you are less reps. Yeah. Magdalene, how much, what's your, if you don't want me asking, what's your body weight? Um, I try not to weigh myself, but last time I went to the doctor, it was like, 120 pounds. Okay. If you ate a hundred grams of protein a day. Okay. So let's go, let's say 33 to 35 grams of protein for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Prioritize that. Okay. If you did that and you followed maps anabolic again, you're going to see significant changes in body composition. Like you're going to get leaner and more sculpted. Your body weight might not even change on the scale, but you're going to look in the mirror and be like, holy cow, what's going on? And the strength gains are going to be phenomenal. Uh, but by, by the way, your strength gains were phenomenal. They were. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody goes from, you know, sets of five reps to sets of 15 reps and keeps the same weight um, unless Not they're doing just phenomenal strength gains. That's yeah. just crazy. But if you if you if you okay. hit about 100 grams of protein a day every day consistently, follow Maps Anabolic again. You're gonna you're it's, you're gonna blow yourself away. Now let's let's talk about what you were doing. 15 reps. Okay, so your squat. How much weight was on the bar? On the end of the program, what like it obviously was the same all the way through. So what were you what were you using to squat? So total was probably a hundred pounds. Okay, yeah, you easily could go to one thirty five. Holy shit, a hundred pounds yes. at a body weight of one twenty. Yeah, you're doing sets at, of 15. For fifteen reps is strong. That's yeah, actually really good. You're doing great. You should easily okay. be able when you get back to phase one again. Easily go to one thirty five. So the forty five is on each side. Here's what we're gonna do, Magdalene, because what you need is a little coaching. Because mm -hmm. I can hear the yeah. um, I can hear the confusion or the uncertainty. In the way you're asking the question, um, I, I'm going to put you in our forum. And if you don't mind videotaping yourself doing some of these exercises, videotape the whole set, right? So however many reps you do, videotape the whole thing. Then put it in there and you could tag us or not. We have a lot of good trainers in that forum. And just say, hey, how does my technique look? Should I add more weight? Is this the right weight? And get some feedback. And then use that forum as a way to coach you. So that you build a little bit of confidence and, and, and certainty with with this type of training, but I mean, I, I mean, geez, if you were a potential client, and you came to me with what oh, you just I'd be said. So excited! Oh, I'd be rubbing my hands together, like, oh boy, this is gonna be amazing. Can't yeah. wait to get my hands on this person. I guess I just don't feel like it really got stronger because I don't feel like it's like visible on my body. So, and I guess that is more takes time. Yes, and that also That's plays more of a role with the diet too. Yeah. So what okay. you, so what you gained was the benefits of your your CNS and the ability for you to summon the strength to lift the weights. You definitely gained strength. That's for sure. You might not have added a lot of muscle to your body from it because we didn't hit our protein intake. You if you okay. if you're if you're low calorie and not hitting protein, you can still get stronger, especially for somebody who's really just getting into these movements. And that's what you experience. The reason why you're not seeing it visually has a lot to do with the diet. And so that's why we gave that advice of like, let's not worry too much about a bunch of things. Just hit the protein intake. If you consistently hit 100 grams every day while going through this program again, you'll see a difference. Yeah. I, I promise you'll see a difference. Let me ask you this too, Magdalene. If your close friends or people that you trust very close to you, do they ever say things to you like, oh my God, what are you talking about? You look amazing. Or I, I, I mean, this looks great. Do, they, do you ever have like that discrepancy where you say, I don't look good. And they say, oh, you look phenomenal. Does that ever happen to you? Yeah, yeah, but okay. I guess I'm my own worst critic. And yeah, I don't really feel like I look good enough or yeah, I'm course. strong enough. So yeah, and the but way yeah, I and I feel it like especially in my shirts, they feel like tight across my back. Yeah. So and, and, and kind of here's why I'm back. saying that, Magdalene. You don't weigh yourself, and that tells me that it's probably a little triggering to weigh yourself. You, the looking in the mirror is subjective. Okay, so. Look, I haven't worked with you. I don't know you very well. I'm just going to have a hunch here just because I've worked with a lot of people. I don't think you should trust what you think you see in the mirror, <laughs> honest to God. I think you should just base it off of your performance in the gym, hitting those targets, and um, kind of ignoring your own self-judgment because I would bet a lot of money 
that if I worked with you and you used the same weight that you did five reps and you did 15 reps, that you would look different. Mm -hmm. It's that's that's and I mean, 100 pounds is not a little bit of weight for someone who weighs 120 pounds. That's pretty good. I bet you look different. I think you're probably looking through a filter that's a little distorted and you might already have recognized that. So I would use the bar and the gym and the, how much you're lifting and how it feels more as a judgment than the mirror because you probably can't trust your subjective opinion too much, not at this point at least. Okay. So your suggestion is to go through anabolic again. Yes. And then mm -hmm. after that, do you have a suggestion as to which program I should do? Yeah. Performance. Yeah, performance would be probably the best. Performance. Thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. performance okay. would be next. But I want you in the forum. I want you to yeah. get some feedback from, yes. from the people in there. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. You got it. Thanks All for right. calling in. Thanks, guys. No problem. Yeah. Uh, boy, you know, I tell you what, the experience. Very close call. Somebody not getting uh, results from anabolic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's just debunked. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what? If if we didn't have the experience that we had, because uh, I want people to understand, coaches in particular, if you're listening, we asked the questions we did because of our experience. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people would have taken that at face value. Oh, you didn't sure. get stronger. Yeah. Let's figure out what the problem was. Right. But I knew, I thought, are you doing the same weight throughout the whole program? Like she is judging it by the weight on the bar and not realizing that doing more reps means you're stronger. Mm -hmm. That's a lot stronger. Oh, that's a crazy strength. She made crazy games. That's crazy strength. Yeah. I mean, she should be able to come back now and easily put 135 on the bar for five. Yeah. yeah. If you were doing 100 pounds for 15, yeah. I got you doing 135 for five easily. Yeah. There'll I, be a little, like, it'll be a psychological battle. Totally. For that's, her. that's it, the, so her just feeling that weight is going to be scary. Like, Ooh, yeah, it's scary. But so that, that would be half the work is just to get her comfortable. Yeah, in fact, I'd go up to 110 just well, to make her sure. comfortable. You know? there, there is that possibility that she she chose the weight she could do for 15 to and do started five. With right, 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 right. And that's why that's she feels that yeah. way too. 100%. Is she's used to doing more circuit-based right. training, and that's a weight she feels very, very com so comfortable. She can to do, get to that. Yeah, she can do 15, which would also play into why she doesn't feel that much stronger and may even look at it. I, I do want to add, I know you said that she's not her best critic, but I, I, I'm always careful of that because – I know what it's like to be like certain, like I know I don't see like, right. I'm, and nutrition plays such a huge role oh, yeah. in what you see in, in the mirror. And if you're living in a yeah. caloric deficit, a lot of times, um, and in the bodybuilding, you hear us talk about, if we call it the flat look, she's not filled all the way out. That will make you look like you're not building muscle. Yeah. I mean, I'm literally going through this with one of my old clients of mine. I'm helping her with her diet, getting lean right now. And she's like so discouraged. And I'm like, I can see it. I said, yeah. you, you're you're flat. That's why I said, yeah. if I were to give you a Some 500 carbs. calorie surplus mm -hmm. the next two days, you would look, you would look totally different. Yeah. And it's not like I built a bunch of muscle in two days. It's just that I filled you out. And so there's a, there's a major psychological component when you talk about what I look like in the mirror. Huge. And, and you can't just judge that. And, and the, well, here's the other clue. She's like, I feel like my shirts are tighter on my shoulders. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Sounds absolutely. like you built some muscle. Built some muscle there in the Absolutely. Shoulders, yeah. Yeah. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. They'll help you. And they're nothing. They cost nothing. They're free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam.